Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? I am Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast, The Authority. <laughs> it's a whole new authority now. Woo-wee, yeah. boy. Yeah. Whole yeah. new authority. Yeah. We, got, oh, it's, we got backup. It's getting different. Yeah, backup. It's different today. Yeah. yeah, we will jump you. Oh, we'll jump on you. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yes. We talk about, we're talking about the essence of a thing. That is so fragile that that you can't say it too loud. <laughs> you you have to whisper. whisper. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the whispers in the building. Yeah. Come on, man. The original queen. The original queen. We know we know what y'all do, Jacket X. We get it. It's Walter and Scotty. We get it. We get it. We love Jacket X. We get it. But this is different. First of all, man, thank y'all so much. No problem. Thank you guys so much, man, for coming. Um this, these are the type of moments for us um, that really bless us. Yeah. That really bless us when we get to really um, dabble into the foundation of this whole thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Because, you know, these are, these are roads, dirt roads, gravel roads um, that were paved. These are, you know, houses that were completely you know, built from the ground up that, mm -hmm. you know, me and this guy, now we get to walk those roads and we get to go into yeah. those buildings mm -hmm. because thank you. of you all. Thank you. So first, man. thank wow. you. Thank you. Thank you know you what I mean? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, you say something, because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Can I start off by saying this? Please. Whatever you want. Yes. Whatever you want. Yes, sir. Let me just say this, man, to you two young guys, Jay Tank. We've watched you guys from afar with a great deal of admiration. And we talk about this all the time. We're from two di different generations. Mm -hmm. What you two young guys have done, the hit makers, the writing, we admire it. We want you to know how we feel about it. Mm -hmm. And we, we say to ourselves all the time, as time goes on, the circumstance makes things better for the younger ones. But mm -hmm. when we came along, we probably didn't have the opportunities that you did. Mm -hmm. But we watched you guys take it and run with it. And before we started this today, we were talking about Jay coming out of retirement. Jay is young <laughs> enough funny. to be my... That's funny, guys. That's so funny to us. Yeah, that's funny, man. Jay is young enough to be my grandson. <laughs> coming out of retirement. Yeah. So what that speaks to, man, it really speaks to what you guys have taken and done with it. We wish we would have had the opportunity. You know, we're going to talk about it today, about the obstacles that were in our way. Mm -hmm. You know, racism, the 60s, mm -hmm. we didn't have the opportunity. But we say this all the time, especially with the rappers, because we're in R&B. But the rapper said, before we let you take our music, we'll sell it out of our car. Mm -hmm. Had we taken that stance when we were coming up, mm -hmm. it would have been quite different. So we watch you guys with all this admiration, man, because that's what y'all did. Yes, you told the industry, you're not going to mess around. You're not going to mess us up. Yeah. We determined to do what we do, yeah. and you've done it. And I'm speaking for the whispers when I say this, man. Greatest of admiration to both of you. Okay. That's what it means to us. Thank you. Let me, let me add one little, I'm going to add one word to what he's saying, and it's a short way of saying what you guys did that we didn't do. You understood the word ownership way better than we did. Yes, sir. We understood it, but when we came along, even if we'd understood it, we the times wouldn't allow it. Mm -hmm. But y'all didn't have that problem, and I just love you for it, mm -hmm. because the people that's going to be after you, your kids, their kids, right. they're going to learn from you, too. Yeah. You know, so you got, if we'd have understood what ownership really meant, fighting, dying for it, do whatever, we'd probably been a lot better off, but we didn't. And we're not we're not blaming nobody but us. Mm -hmm. All the faults we have, we put on us, because yeah. we got the same brain that you got. We might use it a little different, but we all got a brain. Now, how you use it is your problem. But y'all understood that word ownership, and I want to thank you for it. Yes, sir. 
Well, just the times itself allow you to do that. Like yeah. he said, during the time that we came along, there was no such thing, and they weren't going to give it to you. And you were so hungry at the time just to have a record deal. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you already knew, look, if you would have walked in and said, okay, I'll take the deal, but I want to own everything that I do, they would tell you, okay, next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's right. what would have happened to you. Yeah. So we didn't even have that opportunity and was never afforded that opportunity. But as you get older, you know, like the the uh, people like the Ray Charles and, you know, those kind of people were able to go back and get that ownership. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that that's been paid for you guys, you know, you don't necessarily have to go to a record company. There's so many other avenues to put your record yeah. out. Now, we didn't have none of that. Mm -hmm. So like 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 guys, I don't think it was dumbness on our part or none of that kind of thing. We just didn't have the opportunity and we put a probably would have been railroaded out of the business. So you just kind of had to flow with the waters until, you know, you got to the position where we are today, where now we can go back and record everything that yeah, we've done right. over the years. Yeah, but it, but it, took, some, it took some arrogance, though. It, it took, took some, some cockiness. Mm -hmm. The younger generation, y'all... <laughs> Yeah, I was crazy. Y'all say I'm not taking this shit. Excuse right. my expression. Yeah, it, no, this, and that's you, what you it took. You want to. yeah, yeah, this, I mean, you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, we were humble, man, because we were trying to get in the door. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I mean, y'all said, "Hey, I, you ain't taking my shit and fucking it up." Right. That's what y'all and I. That's what needed to be said. Mm -hmm. You know, now even though when you had we said that, it still would have been limited. Mm -hmm. But as time moves on, the opportunities get greater. And y'all took advantage of it. Yeah. And well, I think it's just great, man. Well, I just want to extend you guys, you know, a lot of grace, right, in that regard. Because, you know, the idea of thinking for yourself and wanting to own, there's a diff there was a different repercussion in your time mm -hmm. than there is oh, in our time. Exactly right. You know what I mean? And that's from your blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. of, of doing everything that you were able to do, right? But, you know, it's, it's hard to say, you know, walk in the door and have this mind to want to own something when in, in those days, it could pop, possibly cost you more than just your career. Yeah, no Absolutely. Right. 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 Cost That's you right. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. No, it's, Thank you. Yeah. it's like the, it's like right. the lyric that Jay-Z says. He mm -hmm. said, I'm coming Absolutely. back to get everything that they... From, from, from what everything that they took from the cold crush. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And he literally did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and he had to make the decision of, I'm willing to sink or swim. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. I think for us, it happened in a, a, a couple of ways. I think, obviously, in Tank's situation, it was more so about his longevity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, he started off with one of those draconian deals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. In one of those situations, he just outlasted it. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, for me, it started in a very independent space because obviously I, I started off as a kid in a group and I watched my father get blackballed in the music business mm -hmm. at a very young age. Mm -hmm. So I had to come from a different mm -hmm. angle. Mm -hmm. So it all and being from the Bay Area, yes. it pushed independence in my mind because, mm -hmm. like you said, those rappers that were going out of the trunk were Bay Area rappers. Absolutely, too short. Yes. MC Hammer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So for me, I just always had a different mindset of okay, one, they're not gonna let me in because of my name at the time. Yeah. Um, so I gotta go around the corner. Mm -hmm. Gotta go another. And way. I gotta create these bu this buzz and, and this whole other thing, and that pushed. An independent mindset. Yes. And then us coming together, once we finally locked in, we looked at it like, you know what? We're willing to take less in the beginning so it can be greater later. Wow. Yeah. Very smart. And, yeah. and that's, how, that's how we end up here. Mm -hmm. Betting on ourselves. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Betting on yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Real bets. Like we've, yeah. <laughs> we've sat in some offices <laughs> and, and have had to tell some people, you know, nah, I'm going to roll with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like we always say, we'll split a happy meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There you go. I'm going to roll with my happy meal friend. Mm -hmm. You know what Boy, I'm saying? Before so I let that's this so construct great. tell me what we can and can't do mm -hmm. and what we're capable of. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, again, those are you, you all standing firm in, in any space, in any capacity is the reason. 
For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because sure. there's there's it. evolution. There's us being able to watch that and say, oh, man, how can we learn from that? Mm -hmm. And what extra can we bring to that with now the new technology yes. mm -hmm. and the world being smaller? Oh, and, man. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and now what's even crazier is that in 2022, you know what I mean? We're back looking for you. <laughs> yeah. It just goes. We're back around. looking for you. We're yeah. back wanting to feel how you made us feel. Mm -hmm. We're back. Oh man! You know what I mean? That, it, that's a, it ain't a beautiful circle to make, though. Man. This is a, you. You tell me. <laughs> is it a beautiful circle? Yeah, to make? Yeah, man. Yeah. I tell you, we feel so honored, man, to be here talking to two young guys that are in today's music. Mm -hmm. We come from it. wasn't like that. And I just say it all the time, man. I'm just so excited to see. I watch the young talent today. And people talk about it. Even when we came along, they said, well, you got to be careful. We had this song called Seems Like I Gotta Do Wrong Before They Notice Me. That, that, was, the said, that, was, that the was the title? That was the title. That was the whole title? Seems Like Seems I Gotta like, Do Wrong. I Gotta Do Wrong. And before. my mother said, y'all going to be careful. Y'all going to get in trouble saying yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But today, that's what rap that title, is. that's what that's rap, what rap, rap is. Yeah. 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 But can you imagine back then, we had to be so careful. Yeah. About trying to offend the establishment, yeah. We, like Lavelle said, we was trying to get in, mm -hmm. and then let's go twenty years later. You now we talking about twenty years later, and you doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You younger, you're twenty years younger than us, and it's still around. Still, mm -hmm. but the bravery, man, that's what I talk about. What y'all did, mm -hmm. you said I'm gonna roll with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know how brave that was when you did that? You understand what you yeah. was doing? Well, yeah. it was, with us, it wasn't brave. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> For us, right. that would have been, 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 been crazy. That would have yeah. been crazy. Yeah. We yeah. couldn't do that. that. But you said, hey, I'm going to roll with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm you, gonna bucking, you. you bucking tradition, man. For sure. Well, let but me go back. the youth. To, let me go back to the original. I'm going to tell you one quick story how we even got our name. I it might this. sound funny, but it's the God's truth. We went to a little record company called Dore Records, owned by. Lou Burdell, who long, he's dead and gone, but he gave us a shot. And we were auditioning. We never had a problem with the singing part, like most black young acts. We all sing. Mm -hmm. So we went in and we were singing for him. He said, man, I love you guys' sound. You got this soft, y'all are different. You sound like a whisper. He said, why don't we call you the whispers? And Nick, he said, man, listen. <laughs> Anything you want to call it. If you give us this deal, <laughs> you, call it you, you call us the whiskers. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's true. But I, the point I make, that's what we had to do to get in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't we didn't know nothing about no money. We wasn't even interested in money, even though we needed it. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the point. Just Back then, we wanted to get in the door, which we did. And to his credit, Seems like I gotta do wrong. You love us. So these are songs that you never heard before. Both of you were born. You were even born. Yeah, you right. wasn't yeah. even in the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but this is what we had to do to get in. And like Lavelle said, so you can, can you imagine what you would have said going and talking about, man, listen, I want to deal, but I got to own such. Right. You know what he just told you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the way it was. We were real. gonna call you the whispers, but now we're gonna now show you, you the show you out of here. Yeah. Right. That's what exactly. would have happened. Like we we love to go back to the beginning, and this is a great segue into mm -hmm. going to the beginning. You know what I mean? The inception, the the how we get to the whispers. How did we get to the whispers? Like, was it was it before church? you even got to that meeting? Was it before you even got to that meeting? Was it somebody like, man, y'all should join with son, son, and y'all, boy, y'all will be good together. Like, how well, did that, that was, even happen? Yeah, that was that was a strange story. But let's start with the two of us, Scotty mm -hmm. and I. Born in Fort Worth, Texas, moved to Nevada. My, my father worked for the Navy. We eventually came to Los Angeles. My father was a jazz guy. Mm. He thought rhythm and blues was below him. Wow. No, no, I, yeah, no, no. I, I, I know, yeah. I know those guys. Yeah. When, for when sure. we started listening to Motown and The Temptations, my dad said, wait a minute, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughn, Miles Davis, the Alonious Monk, those are the kings and queens of music. You can't sing. What did you say it was? R and B what? <laughs> That's how he felt about that. Yeah. But as youth, like you guys, 
Man, we would listen to Motown like all the young people. We wanted to be the next Temptations. But we ended up in the 60s on a talent show, Scotty and I as the Scott Twins, Nicholas, Marcus, and Gordy as the Eden Trio. They were performing as a trio. We were performing as a duet. And while backstage waiting to go on, we started harmonizing with each other, the five of us, <laughs> trying to be like what was on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we said, hey, man, after this talent show, we got to hook this up. We can become a vocal group. And that's how the Whispers was formed. Backstage. 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 High school talent show? High school talent show. Yeah. Jordan High fact, School in Watts, California. Yeah, in Markham, Junior High. But we were to do that, and I might add that we won that talent show. Come on, tell you got to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to say who won. Yeah, we'll let y'all in. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, if, but if we Nick won was, all the time. Yeah, if Nick was here, he would tell you that because we did a lot of talent shows. Mm -hmm. Back then, the, I remember the guy's name, Hunter Hancock. He was yeah, a disc jockey. So yeah. he'd come through the neighborhood. We lived in the projects. He'd yeah. come through, and that was the exciting thing that was going to happen. Everybody looked forward uh, to like, it. So yeah. we did a lot of old, the know. start. There you go. That's yeah, even exactly better way of putting it. But we would always end up, we were like competing against each other. And Nick would have said, man, one of these days, we're going to win one of these talent, you know, <laughs> talent shows. But we would always win. But like Walt said, once we put the sound together and we heard it, we said, hey, because what we, I think with my father, to his credit, what he did give us that we didn't know until later it was valuable was bebop. Mm -hmm. For a while, before we got, like you were saying, well, what about before that? Before that, we were about to bebop. You know, my father said, if you want to learn how to sing, learn how to scat. Yeah. And harmonize. Yeah. And harmonize. Oh, that's what yeah. a scat. That's what it, So my father yeah. was, he was saying, you know, yeah. he was, yeah. as a matter of fact, <laughs> it tickles me to this day. When we started singing on beat, my father used to tell me, boy, sing right. <laughs> he did, yeah. I said, what you mean? He said, sing right. That, that's not singing. <laughs> and it was, but to him, but to, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So he said, if you want to learn how to sing, scat like Ella. Mm. Yeah. That sort of thing, and we did. So that's what it's scat lady. That's comes. what it's scat the bebop. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, all that, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's where all the time. I grew up on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but little did we know later on in life, when we start singing, all that would come into play, and it worked to help develop our sound and the whole mm -hmm. thing. And with those whispers you hear today, that's where it pretty much all came from. Well, that's what those whispers, because wow. I didn't come along until. No. Well, he's much later. younger. Yeah, 10 yeah years I came later, on yeah. later. Uh, 15 think, years later. About 15 years later, me yeah. and Walter almost joined the group. He joined about a I year. I came back from Vietnam yeah. and rejoined the whispers. Right. And that's when he came. And then in. I came in about a year or so after mm -hmm. you. Did. So you got drafted? Yeah, I got drafted. Yeah. Went to Vietnam. Yeah. Really? It's been one know. year. Yeah. So, how does the government decide to draft one? You can't not, do it. Can't do it. Oh, you can't do the it. Leak, when the there's laws, twins, when you, you can, can only, only take one. one. Firstborn. Any brothers, yeah. Firstborn. I ended up getting drafted. Firstborn. That's, That's it. it. If they just. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all would just flipped around in the womb one no, time. Well, no, yeah. he was glad that they took him. Oh, yeah, if they didn't take him, he would have been dishonorably discharged. I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. He didn't never made it. And I knew God knew that. God was a husband. I knew that. I was a good guy. God could have never made it. That would have never ever worked. So you went to Vietnam for how long? One year. Yeah. I spent what the year of 1966, I spent in the Central Highlands of Vietnam. I was a radio operator. But also, thank you for your service. Thank, thank you for your service. Thank yes, you for your service. And thank God, because of music, I didn't end up in the infantry because I my memory with with sound, Morse code, did it, did I, did it. I could, being a musical person, that's the <laughs> score that I scored highest on. Kept me out of the industry. Wow. Ended up in the Signal Corps. The only black guy in there. Oh, that's probably. amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. did Morse code. But then when I came back, the whispers had left me. They had. You said they had left you. Left yeah. me behind. Yeah, yeah left me. Well, they yeah. didn't come to a level of what you see now. When I left, I was kind of the leader of the whispers. When I came back, he went and told my mom. He, my mom called me Junior. He said, "I don't think Junior gonna make it in the group, Mom." She said, "Why?" She because he he don't it, know how to perform. He's rusty. <laughs> he's <laughs> you don't rusty. know what to do. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> my mom told him, "Said, well, you better hope he make it." He said, why? Because he, she said, if he don't make it, you ain't, you ain't gonna, gonna make, make it. it. <laughs> talk the talk. 
That's yeah, right. that's my, right. my brother's keeper. You better go. But that's, and it took me about five years because I, I didn't know. It took you five years? Really, when I say five years, to entertain. I could right. always sing, mm-hmm. but I didn't know how to entertain. When we saw The Temptations and the OJs, yeah. Oh, yeah. these five yeah. brothers, they knew what to do with their hands. They knew yeah. how to talk to the audience. Mm-hmm. The Whispers knew how to do that just as good as that. I didn't know how to. I could just stand there and sing. <laughs> and my voice was, could always save me, but... You know this. You can sing good as you want. Good as you want. But if you can't entertain. Yeah. You can't entertain. You're, you're not just gonna standing be there boring as well. Well, when he left, to show you from, from one stage to the next, when he left, to show you about entertainment, because we being twins, I was sort of shy. You know, I, I could sing too, but I'd have to be behind him. Mm-hmm. So when we would sing, I'd stand behind him, because that was my confidence. That was yeah. my comfort level. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But when he left and we went on the road, and there was a young disc jockey up in the Bay Area, of all places. He was the hottest thing on the radio at the time. I know who you're talking about. His Sylvester Salone. Sly Stone. Yeah. yeah. We got a on. story about your dad. We got, we got oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. He said he wants to talk about anything, right? Here we go. No, no, no. We, we got stories. Yeah. I got stories. Yeah. Your dad probably didn't tell you, but and you may not want me to tell you. But no, we was down. We was together. But Sly. Heard a record called Never Again as a disc jockey. And he said, man, who are these guys? I'm going to bring them to you. And he brought us to the Bay Area. And when he, we came to a little place called the Sportsman Club, your dad might have mentioned there was a Sportsman Club, the, the, the Showcase, uh, McKesmo's, I admit, it was all Bay Area. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So he brought us from here to Los Angeles to the Sportsman Club. In Oakland. Sly Stone on the radio. And we, we were supposed to be there for like a week. We ended up staying there two years. <laughs> wow. We were the opening act for every major act that came through then. But in that during that time it was Curtis Mayfield, uh, Otis Redding. We saw Otis Redding a week before he died. Came through. We but we were the opening act. Yeah, would open that. And that's where we sort of learned, I call it, that's where we went. Craft, yeah. Craft, right there in the, sport, in the Bay Area. That's why I love the Bay Area. I lived there. He never came to, he came to the Bay Area, but he never liked it. I lived there for 14 years, just me. Yeah. And when he came, he said, oh, no, no, I go back to LA, I can't. It's, no, it's, 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 it's very much a love love or hate place. That's it's true. no in between in the Bay Area. For me, area, it was you know? love. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. so I get it yeah. completely. What I learned that I didn't know when I left LA, like they called me a hustler, but in Oakland, as you well know, you better have a hustle. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to know how to do something. You, you became a native. You became a native. You know, you know, yeah. Excuse yeah. my French. Yeah. It wasn't about going to church on Sunday and <laughs> the family staying there all day up in Oakland. Everybody had some other way to make some kind of money. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I was for 14 years. And when he came up there, he said, No, I can't. I need yeah, to go I was back up there to with Sly Stone there, and up Bubba there with Hemp Sly and, and Rose. Can you believe yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Man, so was that's where it really it started slide. for us. Biggest in DJ the in the that's, world. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. why I say the Bay Area really made us because we learned our craft in the Bay Area. Everything that before we went on the road and all that, it all started Oakland, Richmond, San Francisco, the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. So but we slide cred- to his credit. Yeah. In Los Angeles, it was such a big metropolis. If you didn't have a hit record, you couldn't get on the radio. Mm. Sly Stone was the biggest jock. In the Bay Area, right? If he liked it, you got a shot. You got a shot. shot. Yeah. And yeah. he heard our song, and put it on the radio station, and that's how we really got our start. We had to come back to Los Angeles to be kind of. These are the whispers. They kind of got a hit, but in we the were. Bay. They thought we were from the Bay, but we originated right. from. We just couldn't get on yeah. the air in LA. Yeah. Well, wow. I'm, I'm flat out, my father told me y'all was from the Bay my whole life. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, because they picked yeah. the they, they really adapted. They don't know they, yeah, that they we're from. Yeah, yeah, as far as yeah. they're concerned, we are from the Bay. Yeah, yeah. You know, so my from, whole yeah. life, but like, yeah, you know, the whispers they from the Bay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Lying. exactly. Well, let's. You know what? Here's the the guy that today runs our situation. His name is Alonzo Ward. Your father knew the Ward brothers. The Ward brothers. Yeah. yeah. The Ward brothers. You know about ran. the Ward brothers? Absolutely. They ran the Bay Area. Yeah. yeah. That's what you had to that's, get. That's where the, the that's Mac what. That's comes exactly. From. You know what I'm talking yeah, the about? Movie the Mac comes from. That's yeah. where the movie. Yeah. The that's Mac where the movie. Yeah. That's Based exactly on them. Right. Yeah. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. They ran Oakland. Yeah. In terms of, you want to be a hustler and a good hustler. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the Ward brothers. World. Yeah. yeah. And them and your dad were 
great friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they gave us, they kind of let it, they gave us the acceptance. We did a talent show, and the Ward brothers were there. And by them applauding for us, that put us on the map in Oakland. Yeah. Wow. Hustlers. When yeah. we end up making Olivia Lawson turned out, yeah. that's what that was about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that yeah. was about. Yeah, she was on her way to grandmother's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she yeah. <laughs> so, Whoa, man, it's you a understand. story, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 it I, really, I, really I, is. I completely it's understand. Really is, it's, it's, yeah. it's so interesting because I'm always asked, you know, my inspirations and what, how did I learn how to sing? And, you know, it's, and, and I think Tank and I, we 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 mesh so great because it's it's R and B music from two different sides. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. mine is his is church hit. His is church. Mine is Cadillac. Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's the best way. To I what a great description, yeah. man! You know, yeah. yeah. And yeah. most people don't understand the Cadillac side of music or R and B. Absolutely, everybody usually goes toward. Oh, you came from the church. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, no, oh, mm-hmm. no. There's a whole nother side oh, no, where you didn't come from the church. There's mm-hmm. just pure. There's hustlers who just love music. That's exactly mm-hmm. right. And literally, our vocal coaches as a kid were all my father's pimp friends and mm-hmm. hustlers. Exactly. Wow. You know what I mean? Just Absolutely. guys who yeah. played in a band, but they, you know, they played a whole nother game. That's exactly <laughs> you know what right. I mean? That's so, exactly right. Uh, for us, what we grew up on was the Delphonics. And the whispers, and wow. you know what I mean, yeah. and, and all of these groups, Blue Magic, yes. all these groups that mm, yes. really were singing about the game. That's right. exactly. That's if you listen exactly to right. those lyrics. Mm, right. That's what they were those singing lyrics about. are completely about absolutely the game. What's that's going exactly on right. the street? Um, the game. So, right. you guys' music always just connected to me the most because I'm just like this. Literally, is what I see every single day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Man, what a beautiful. And just even the way that it was worded. Yeah. Just it was it's just special. We'll have to give Nick credit for that. He, yeah. We yeah. lost him in two sixteen, but mm-hmm. he wrote, like you said, about the streets. Yeah. And and we sung it. Right. Simple as that. I mean, I don't know. Streets and said. ladies. That was his thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And they wanted to respect the ladies yeah. to the utmost. That meant everything to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. He said to us, if we respect our mothers and sisters and our wives, ladies. You can't miss. Yeah. Can't miss. And that's what we did. Yeah. Lady mm-hmm. was the biggest ballad that we ever had. You know, and today, here we are fifty six years later. Wow. Man. Fifty six I mean, if you'd have told me, I mean, y'all when you said you retired, well, we heard that today. Man, yeah. <laughs> Jake said, I had to pull him out of retirement. We looked at each other. We couldn't believe you said that. I just wanted to try some other Retire. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you used the wrong words. You right said you don't qualify for retirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, baby. When I saw you sing, I'm glad you're back. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Thank I mean, you have an incredible you voice. You can't retire. And to man. not let people hear that gift. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you said something earlier the combination between you two, when I saw the Soul Train Awards, I'm like, what? Where the hell is that song come from? And the, yeah. you know, back and forth. Yeah. We were sitting laying in bed watching the show, and I said, we gotta go find that on. Let me download that. <laughs> yeah. right it's about yeah. that time. It's about that time. Yeah. 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 And then we played it because you know I know you you had to do the G version. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. Had, we, had to do <laughs> we were riding down, and we're like, "Where the hell is that?" Uh, yeah, this record is way more crazy. <laughs> yeah. More deep than when we talk about yeah. Tristan. Oh, they my nasty, wife said, nasty. Let's, "Yeah, she said, let's, let's see if we can find the the, <laughs> the, the, the nice the, the nice <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that one really exists. We were yeah. trying to figure it out at rehearsal. I was like, "Wait, so which which, which one is the FCC right. you know, kick me off the stage right. for?" And they were sitting there looking at us too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because you, you had that song. When we put out a song, we had a song called Pissed Off. Mm. And we were going to do it on Soul Train. Routine, all that stuff. It was laid out. Nicholas Caldwell with his routine. The song was. And so we sung the song down when the first Don, time. And Don Knees. Don Knees. Cut, cut. Um, uh, that, that, that. that Word pissed off. <laughs> you you can't to, say that. You mean, the, you mean the title of the song? Yeah. <laughs> the reason you called us? Uh, yeah. Confused. The reason you called us, right. And yeah, so wow. we had to, they had to bleep out pissed off. They had to bleep we also out. changed yeah. the name. We had to change yeah. the, t- the song originally was called Pissed Off. Right. What year is this? 
Oh God! That'd be like in the nineties, right? Was it about yeah. late? No, late eighties. Late eighties. Late eighties. Yeah, okay. But this we time. changed yeah. it to "Baby Come Back." We had we to had to change it to "Baby Come Back" because well, they, it was they, "Baby words, Come Back, Don't Leave." But the, yes, word, the title was pissed off. Yeah, they yeah. said that's got to come. Yeah. That's got to go. But we wow. got to go. So we can't use that. Change the whole situation. But the point is, back then, I mean, today. Today, yeah. <laughs> that would be that laughed at. That, that, oh, yeah. That would yeah. be laughed at. You are? That, that, yeah. that's oh, your really? You pissed yeah. off? Yeah. Pissed off ain't enough. That ain't no, enough. ain't enough. Yeah, yeah. you got to look at like, yeah. piss the fuck off. Like, yeah. That's the title of my new song. Yeah. yeah. Piss the fuck off. Yeah. 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 Somebody's going to get maybe, shot. Maybe mad as a motherfucker. Maybe mad as a motherfucker. My new single, Mad as a Motherfucker, come out tomorrow. Streaming on all platforms. Exactly. You have to change that. Yeah. And playing on every radio station. But that just goes to how far along we've come back. Yeah. yeah, we go back. Yeah. So let yeah. me ask you this: you 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 win, okay? You win. You Let's win get the that competition. Yeah. You, you won, and then you you gave these other three guys an opportunity to join the winners, mm -hmm. the winner's circle. When did you get to a point where somebody put some real paperwork and wanted to have a real conversation with you? Yeah, like how how, how, how long level? did that take between you guys doing talent shows to you guys getting to that office and and that Being lasted whispers. about five years, and then the real monumental change came when I went to a Curtis Mayfield concert and met Dick Griffey. Shout out to Dick Griffey. Mm -hmm. That's when it happened. Yeah. He Solar won. Records. Solar, Solar Records. Records. This Solar big Records. guy who looked like a professional football player. Mm -hmm. You guys know what Dick looked like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Him and my he, father were friends. They were friends. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly yeah. right. And he walked up to me. My wife and I were at the concert after it was over, and he walked up to me. He said, listen, I can make you guys a big, big group. He said, you remind me a lot of Gladys Knight and the Pips, but I think you can be better. Well, I looked at him, he looked like a football player, and we had heard this a lot. Every time we'd get around people of influence, they would say, man, y'all need to let me do something with you. All right. Mm -hmm. But it never happened. Yeah. He begged me. We, actually, we met for three different occasions before I would bring him in for the whispers because I didn't know, I really didn't know, I don't know if he was bullshitting or what, mm -hmm. Yeah. but he was serious. So about a month later, no, about six months later, we met in my cousin's garage with uh -huh. Dick Griffey. Right here in Los Angeles. Yeah. And he said, I want to be your manager. And the question is answered when what you said, that's when we, he was our manager. We didn't really have a record company, but he managed us to go up against labels and have discussions. So he didn't have Solar at this time? Oh, no. no. He, was, he was a promoter. He was a promoter. No, no, he, Don okay. Cornelius put black acts that you now see today that had mm -hmm. never been heard of on television. Right. And Dick Griffey promoted them. He was the biggest black promoter in the United States. So imagine. Wow. He would take Man. the guys, the, the those two guys. guys. Those two guys. <laughs> Stevie Wonder was his first, he's the yeah. first one that took Stevie Wonder on a on major cross-country yeah. tour. Dick Griffey did. Dick yes. Griffey did. Dick Griffey. And then he also yeah. organized. Most people don't know him as, yeah. a, as a promoter. I didn't no, know him as yeah. a promoter. He no, was that, a promoter. That's how he came into the business mm -hmm. pretty right. much, yeah. Yeah. And then he and Don hooked up. Okay. They basically said, I have the television in, you're promoting, so let's, they created Soul Train Records. And now we get into the controversy. Right. These two men, two of the most brilliant guys that yeah. I've ever met in my life, they couldn't get along. I can see that. Their egos. <laughs> I, egos. I can see that. Egos. To yeah. this day, man, we, we said, had these two guys been like Barry Gordy and had a little less ego to get along, they'd have been the biggest black entrepreneurs. They'd have been the Jay-Z of the day. Mm. No, I mean, Don had, had television. Don yeah, had television. He had, he yeah. had the ability to, to promote acts the all over the country. Yeah, the so between the two of them, mm -hmm. they would have had it locked up, but they couldn't get it. So they up. start Soul Train Records together. They started so, so yeah. it was Don. Dick came up with the name, and Don liked it, and it became Soul Train Records. Mm -hmm. But maybe three or four years into it, they clashed. And you guys are signed to Soul Train Records at the time. We were signed. We were the first act signed to Soul Train Records. We went on the road one day, <laughs> came back the next, and Locks was on Soul Pad Train. Locks Pad Locks was on the record company. Because they, they had fell out. They had fell No more record company. It was yeah. gone. Just like <laughs> no that. No more record company. No more, no, all the acts Man. that they had. Mm -hmm. Don felt 
that his television career was was kind of in jeopardy with Dick. Dick was like your father. They were great friends. Dick was a hustler, yeah. but a good, but a brilliant hustler. Mm-hmm. Guy went to the Navy, could have went to Annapolis. That's how smart he was. Mm-hmm. Chose to be a hustler. Don feared that. He didn't like his television thing being associated. Yeah. So they parted ways. It's too street. Too street. Mm-hmm. But just think, had they put it, had they kept it together? I had no idea. That's like the can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, literally. That's exactly. Dick literally. Was, you said it. He was the, too the, street. The potential is just scary as to scary. what could have happened. Yeah. yeah. But what we learned from that, sometimes when it ain't meant to be, it, it ain't meant to be. I mean, yeah. How good? They should have been the giants. They could have yeah. been the first been two major. black yeah. presidents, as far as I'm concerned. But and then the other lesson that was learned is how dangerous that ego is. Because that's all that destroyed it. Right. Ego messed up other young at the black community. They could have rose the whole black community. Yeah. But again, ego stepped in, good sense stepped out. But the good part about it is that with Dick Griffey, even when they were going through their thing, there was never any fear for the whispers because Dick Griffey, we had so much confidence in who he was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was a hustler. And you knew if he said he was going to do something, he, he was, was going to do it. He says, well, don't worry enough. about it, fellas. I'm forming a new company. It's going to be called Solar Records. You're going to be my first artist on that label. Mm-hmm. And he put the energy and, and went out and found producers like the Leon Silvers mm-hmm. of the industry and put them what with the great. He says, "I want to, I want to shape this like, like the Motown world." That was a template. Very, that was he wanted to be like, yeah. he wanted yeah. to be yeah. like Motown, yeah. and, and he, he put it together, going. yeah, and got writers after writers after writers, and you know, his ability, his A and R ability was incredible. Dick Griffey was an A and R genius, so yeah. he would sit down, we would listen to songs. He says, "Yeah, this song is." song would be good for you and so when we did our first <laughs> first project with him you know we wanted to take up all the songs he said no young young niggas got enough hits right there so, <laughs> yeah. you yes. know it's, it's enough for y'all i gotta spray it this well to other groups like you know like lakeside uh, lakeside shalomar, shalomar, shalomar. shalomar. <laughs> all of those other did he people have star as well? yeah. 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 yeah well let me yeah. give you i tell you a lot of people didn't realize like lavelle said he was a great a and r guy to give you an example of how nobody would ever notice just take the lakeside song uh fantastic voyage fantastic voyage yeah. mm-hmm. you know the rap that's in there take mm-hmm. take a long dick a dick a yeah. okay yeah. that was in the middle of the song did griffey say hey Take the that there and open your song up with that. With that, mm-hmm. open it with the, open it with the rap. No. Nobody. And even them, yeah. they said, "Man, you don't know what you talk about." But he was the president, right? It so was his company. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. Said, he said, "Take that rap, yeah. put it in front, biggest record they ever had." Right. Just like he told the deal, uh, y'all gonna let Babyface sing. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah. <laughs> y'all, gonna let, y'all gonna let Babyface that's sing. That's the story. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the story. That's, that's, Babyface came to us. And said, man, the deal don't like none of my songs. Oh my God. They said, everything I write. That's the truth. I'm That's telling you the truth. Didn't oh like none God. of the songs. The deal wanted to be Prince. Prince. Mm-hmm. Right. They had to, they wanted to be Prince. <laughs> so when you hear two occasions, my, 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 you know, uh, in the mood, they didn't, want, they didn't like none of them songs. We were down in Atlanta at the God. yearly. They didn't want to hear none of them. Face in L.A., who at the time was was Kenny Edmonds and L.A. And Reed. LA they weren't Reed, yeah. Face in L.A. at that time. Submitted those songs. We heard them. We went crazy. It, it, he, he, we told Babyface, you were meant to write for us. Man. He said, I'm so glad because my group. They don't want it. They don't, they don't want none, none of these songs. songs. But you know what? Now you saw, you guys remember the deal, right? Oh, Baby, you but in all fairness to them, he's saying that, and I agree with it. He said that I don't think that they didn't want them. That's not what they were. These were young, they were. impressionable. Yeah. Hey. They saw Prince, Prince they, and they said, yeah, you right. know what? That's what I want. Air was cut like that. They were like a lot of young guys. So for them, they didn't want to be the whispers. They didn't want to be the whispers. We were an older group. I mean, let's just be honest. Nothing personal. Ain't nothing. But that's not. But we don't want. We don't want to be that. We that young guy with that earring in his ear, mm-hmm. and the girls is going crazy. Right. That's who we want to be. Yeah. 
But what we understood, we knew, and the one thing we've always knew, we knew what we could do, and that's it. Don't be trying to be something you're not. We know we can't rap. You ain't never heard us try to rap. Right. Because we know what, that don't mean we don't like it. But we understood what Babyface, he was hearing what we actually could do. And when we heard that music, we said, hey, man. It's perfect. And we oh, took yeah. it to Dick. As a matter of fact, to show you, we actually tried to sign him. We had a company called Black Tie. We wanted to sign him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And man. Dick Griffin said, no, no, you no. can't. No, no, no. You can have the song, but I want him. <laughs> well, just and like yeah. uh, Lakeside was signed to Midnight Star. That was their yeah. act. Mm. Y'all know how that worked. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, that's I think I knew that. No, I the think deal. I did. Did you, I'm sorry. The deal. No, they were signed, signed to Midnight, Midnight Star. Star not the the deal was signed to Midnight Star. Yes, exactly. Because right. Babyface yeah. wrote. That Babyface wrote. He wrote um, his first to, hit. His first hit. To, uh, a deal, to occasion. No, no, no. Not no, 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 to occasion. No, 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 when I always called the hustler mentality that, that I favor, because Dick was a hustler, he gave the acts the freedom. Yeah, I mean Barry Gordy worked in Detroit for the the motor industry, and he was a more kind of structured more guy. Structured yeah. guy. Yeah, 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 the yeah. difference between Barry Gordy and Dick Griffey, both brilliant in their own way, but I always say that Dick brought the hustler mentality to music in relating to younger acts mm -hmm. because he was from the street. He would give you the opportunity to come and explain to him what you were trying to do with a song. Leon Silvers was in his prime. He was beginning to be who he would become as a producer. Mm -hmm. And man, Dick would sit there and listen to you all night. Barry Gordy, on the other hand, if you know, Motown had great stars, mm -hmm. but you know the story. They brought what's going on and he didn't want to put it out. Yeah. He was like my mother told us, that's a little too, that was the key difference. He was going with the formula. He was going with the formula yeah, because yeah. he came like us from that earlier generation that didn't make him that daring. Right. Yeah. You, the, you guys were daring. Mm -hmm. So, so great about what y'all did because, but, the, but we all know that Motown is what it is. And historically speaking, Absolutely. it's the greatest black record company there ever was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Dick Griffey, that was his, that's who he was trying to imitate mm -hmm. was Barry Gordy. But we had this stable, Babyface, Leon, Midnight Star, uh, Dynasty, Dynasty, Shalimar, Shalimar. Shalimar. Lake this Side. little company in Los Angeles, as y'all know, went That's on to amazing. become, Huge. I mean, the hits were coming Legendary. from everywhere. Yeah. Legendary. And the writers, you know, the writers. No, somebody somebody has to do a story. Yeah, because yeah. it just, it's just crazy. Because Leon happened. Silvers, they think everything was written by Leon Silvers. The earlier hits were... But Leon was smart enough to say, I'm going to get a staff of writers that are hungry. Uh -huh. And what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll A&R their stuff right. and add my little flavor to it, right. like almost like a school for yeah, writers. Sure. Yeah. And he would, I mean, just one And because hit you the wanted other. the Leon Silver's records, if his if he was attached to it, he was attached yeah. to it. It you was believed Leon. It. He believed it, yeah. and so, he and he gave them the freedom too. Yeah, because he, I mean he he came with some stuff. I remember we did a song, and, and I look back at it. It was the funniest thing in the world. He gave he gave to Scott. He says, "Okay, he said I want you to say you know I want you to do your scat, you know." You want, and I want you to say, and you what know, that mean? what that means. Hey, Scotty, means. hey, what Scotty, that mean? what that mean? And then, you know, after he did a scat, and this guy's like, man, I ain't doing that. That's the craziest thing in the world. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wind up being one of the biggest songs that we had. But that was the genius of him. He said, I'm going to find a way to use Scotty's scat. Yeah. When most people ran away from it, yeah. he found a way to embrace it. Yeah. And it's same thing with And the Beat Goes On. Leon Silvers had a way that when he was in the studio with you, because at that time he didn't have a drum machine. No drum machine. No. Mm -hmm. So he would no. get on his knees and just hit the bass drum with, basically hit the bass drum. He had a little mallet, boom, boom, boom. Then he'd do that. Then he would get the snare, and then he would do the he cymbals. He moved to the toms. He was a, in the, the toms. He, he, he had it in his head. He was the drummer. So he wasn't a drummer. Wasn't a drummer. He was a bass player. He was a bass player. He was a bass player. Bass player. But he bass had that thing in his head. head. In his head. In his head. How to do and it. And when he finished. When he finished. That was And the Beat Goes On. Yeah. We saw it from the bass drum up. 
And the, the thing that's that how was, he did it. What, what Lavelle Incredible. was just saying was amazing about him, and I'm a witness to it because what he asked me to do, because I didn't know the finished product, I thought he was crazy. <laughs> so I'm fighting with my guys about doing it. I said, man, I'm not doing that. What you mean? What that? What does that mean? That sound like me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what do you think? Oh, he wanted them. He wanted them. So you know. I'll tell what? you the story about him later. Uh, yeah. That sound like me. But what he would end up doing because he knew the end, what was going yeah. end game. And when we heard, man, listen, when we finished and the beat goes on, we knew that night. Y'all had it. Thank God we had our first inspector. It. We it knew was, it. Yeah, we were close Nobody to not doing it. it because yeah. Leon Silver was such a perfectionist. Yeah. He got away from vocal feel as much as he wanted it. Yeah, he pocketed. Technically, technically. He wanted that technical, was very thing. pocketed yeah. on that yeah. song. Yeah. Where they so clashed. Scotty That's was where we clashed. To, Scotty I'm was just used feel. to being free, yeah. singing you know, behind the beat I, and, I, yeah. well, a little early and stuff Even like that. Even if it's behind, if it doesn't matter, it's what I feel. Exactly. And I used to tell him all the time. Go with even if it's flat, if it feels right, right. Feel yeah. keep it. Yeah. Leon Silver said, "No, no, 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 no. He he do it again. No, no he's not, not going. Not, not on this one. That's yeah. the technicality. Yeah. But he kept everything. But he kept everything. Because you know that. when Nick told him, he said, "Listen, even if it's flat and it feels good, you'll never get that moment again. It's gone. Yeah, keep it. Just keep it. Mm -hmm. Just keep don't it. don't erase it." Mm -mm. And he understood that. Mm -hmm. And you know about you about feel. I know you because I didn't hurt you. <laughs> you all about feel. Yeah. But, but you know what? It took me a minute to find feel because I used to be so technical. He used to be very technical. I'm no like kidding. Church guy. Okay. So yeah. me, the runs got to be precise. And oh, the yeah. tone, the vibrato, like all that. Like I'm a student of uh -huh. vocals. He was yes. being too talented. You know, I'm being way too talented. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it did not until... Not until, I could always sing, but not until like 2016, 2015, around that time, 2016, really? was I introduced to like feel. See, Raw this, feel. what Jay would, Jay is like, Jay is like my underground pulse. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. my, he's my underground pulse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For every, anything bubbling on the underground uh -huh. whatever it is you hear rap this? anything you hear this and you heard that new uh, <laughs> little bouncy head boy yeah. featuring, <laughs> featuring tune up yeah. i was like no what are you talking about he'll send it to me and he'll and he'll play it i was like man what is this He's like is this screwing <laughs> and i had to start like trying to understand why that was working and so you know, I'll try to make this a very short story. Um, Zaytoven, good friend of his, you know what I'm saying, uh, buddy of mine. I go in the studio with Zaytoven. He's like, you need to meet up with Zaytoven, man, and just, you know, play him some of the music and let him know, you know, just, just talk to him about what's going on. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I go in with Zaytoven, and I got this song, right? And this is where I'm trying, I'm trying to get on my way. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get into my feel. You know? <laughs> and I got this track, and I'm dancing on the track. Tell me I'm dancing on it, right? But I got two versions. Um, I called this guy, um, DJ Black, and he put, put me together with um, Rich Homie Kwan. Mm. Um, and um, not DJ Black. Um, he gonna kill me. Anyway, so get to Rich Homie Kwan. Walk in the studio. I see Rich Homie Kwan. The first thing he does is just start singing all of my songs <laughs> off key. <laughs> Maybe I'm here. <laughs> ah, <laughs> big fan of you, dog. Big fan of you, dog. Put up on you, dog. My mama and them dog. Immediate. And so you know, he's like, dog. I, 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 I done I done like ten features already, dog. We about to get to your joint right now. So you do 10 features tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we do about 20. 10 features tonight? <laughs> I know we do about 20, dog. We're going to be doing like, put Tank Jones on right now. You know what I'm saying? Pull my record up. And he's going to, I have him redoing the second verse, which I had already done really clean and nice. Mm -hmm. So my vibe, but you know, I'm, you know, Rich Homie, come on, let's try to see what the kids got, right? <laughs> so as, when he's getting ready to lay his part, his guy, the guy comes get me and said, um, hey, man, Rich Homie wants you in the, in, the, in the booth. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, let's go in the booth. So I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I go in the booth, I was like, what, what you need? He said, sit down right there. I'm like, all right. Hope this ain't getting weird. 
He said, I just want your energy in here while I'm doing the record, while I'm recording. I just need your energy so that we can, you know what I'm saying? We can really vibe and make this a thing. I was like, this is a first. <laughs> but okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, mind you, uh, you know, Rich Homie, majorly talented, but he uses auto tune. Oh. He's not a singer, uh -huh. he's a stylist. Yeah. Okay. Right? Like, okay. He's auto tune like Roger? No, 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 yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It sings into the. It's 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 not. not it, it keeps your notes. It keeps your notes. It corrects it. More auto tune like share. Oh, okay. Yeah, got gotcha. Roger okay. obviously was you. Roger, yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, but, you know, but it yeah. keeps you in, in tune. Oh no, it keeps you in tune. Yeah. So DJ Fresh. Oh, DJ Fresh. My guy, DJ Fresh, out of Cincinnati. My guy, excellent. Thank you, sir. Um, so I'm getting the raw vocal. I don't have no headphones. He's, you know apparently doing his thing mm -hmm. in his headphones mm -hmm. right so all i'm hearing is ha! <laughs> she would be shit and, <laughs> and then he'll stop and he'll look at me and, go, and i'm like oh, oh you yeah. love it <laughs> oh you turn this motherfucker upside down <laughs> and in my mind i'm like he fucking my song <laughs> 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 so, so I got these two versions. I got the version I really love with just me. I'm dancing, finding my vibe on the song, and I got this version with Rich Homie Kwan. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm you know, what did I just do to my song? And so I'm sitting there with Zaytoven, you know, who's a masterful producer. You know, what I'm saying, helped create the way. You know, what I'm saying, yeah. the Atlanta way. Like he's that guy. And so I play him my version. And he was like, that jamming right there. That's jamming. <laughs> I like, I like what you did. And I said, I said, now I'm gonna play you. The rich homie Quan version, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I felt like I was in a zone. He might have interrupted that zone. You tell me what you think. And as soon as that record came on, and rich homie came in with his heart, so he told me, said, "That's it right there. I don't even know you. That's it right there. What else you want?" Yeah. I was like, "That's it." He said, "Yeah, that's it, thank." You being too talented. I said, I'm doing what? <laughs> you being too talented. You being thinking with your talented mind. Ain't nobody <laughs> doing that no more than no, what? No, no. And so from that moment on, I had to go like kind of reevaluate how I was, you know, how I was dancing on this music. Mm -hmm. And I had to find my feel. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so yeah, I understand. You know, I had a I had a thing where I would keep some dirt on the background. Uh -huh. Not perfect backgrounds, but I had never like tapped into a wave where like let's just see where this takes us mm -hmm. right. and roll with it. That's yeah. Right. That's what, you know what I'm saying? That's so where when, it you, from. Yeah, when yeah. you say that, it was like yeah. finding that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Maybe working like with vocal producers like Harvey who yeah. lock you in, mm -hmm. but if you hit something Mm -hmm. He's like, no, 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 that's great, buddy. That's yeah, great. Keep yeah. that. Let's right. keep that. Yeah. 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 That yeah. just feels right, brother. Yeah, that just feels right. right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we've been there. Yeah. So it's like you, you, you being a feeling guy, and then this oh, guy man. saying, no, we need to be right in here. No, this, and if you listen to that record, mm -hmm. if you listen, like you really listen to that record, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Sonically, there's nothing like I've my whole entire life I've heard this song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's absolute. I can't find. You can find something in every song. You're like, mm -hmm. ah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, if they would have. Right. So hearing you guys tell the backstory about how Leon Silver was like, listen, mm -hmm. this has to be that. This, 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 Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Especially on an up tempo. Absolutely. Because right. it's, exactly. it's even more freedom on an up tempo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yes. Right. But yeah. from the harmonies to every single part of that song, mm -hmm. Absolutely. is Perfect. in pocket. Yeah. In and that's yeah. the way mm -hmm. he did it. He yeah. thought. Every single thing, every harmony, yeah. every little ad lib, he had it already up here. Yeah. Yeah. And Scotty yeah, was like, well, did. man, I like my ad lib. He said, no, no, that's yeah. not quite what I'm <laughs> looking <laughs> for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he and would, okay. he, and he did that a lot. He did that a lot. And then Scotty got to the point where he's like, fuck this. And went and <laughs> left oh, out the studio went, and I'm was getting ready to leave. About doing a song, we but, all running out to the parking lot because we already hear what he's done is a hit already. We already hear that. It's so, already done. So, so let me we tell went you what out. I learned from Leon, and I, I do this with. That's why we like to deal with young producers. It ain't about how well you sing. No, hmm, it's not at Your all. The producer has something in mind yeah. 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 that you need to take advantage of. Right. Yeah. It ain't got nothing to do with your voice. Yeah. No. You may have the greatest <laughs> voice in the world. That ain't what this is about. Yeah. This is an idea that I came with 
that's got to go this way. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to put a feel in it that you like, that's great. But this is the way I, I'm producing. Yeah. So I, I respect all producers. The trust factor. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the trust factor. Hey, man. Because, Absolutely. I mean, to be honest with you, when you do your runs, you have a certain style right. of how you do things. Mm -hmm. But the, the good thing is that you have the ability, both to of do you whatever, guys, right? that if some new producer come along, that you like, man, that song is dope. And he says, no, Tank, can you sing this line this way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were like, yeah, but what was wrong with mine? But if you follow him... <laughs> He may have well, something different, something better, yeah, and, better and, yeah. and and actually add to your repertoire of things that you can use. Mm -hmm. And the blessing is those two niggas right well, there. Well, not only that, you they can were do able it. to do that. God you can do it. Yeah, ability. you can execute well, anything right. that he wants. Well, because it it goes back to what you were saying, the trust factor. I didn't trust really that. trust a whole lot of people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, growing yeah, up, yeah, saying yeah, that. Right. It's and so especially, funny, especially a guy who couldn't sing well, trying to vocal yeah, produce. Exactly. And that was the case. That was the case. But you had to You ain't got no problem. Right. Are you gonna tell? Tell me what. Tell me what. Yeah, I know. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't but know you, about steel tones. What are you doing? But you know something? It's funny you say what you said because I watched you earlier when we were looking at your house mm -hmm. and we heard yeah. about you and we said, well, let's go and check out who this tank guy is. Yeah. So we listened to your music. But it's funny you say that because when I see you sing now, you seem like you're enjoying yourself Absolutely. for the first time. Absolutely. You know, because you're not here. Nope. You're just whatever's going on in here. Absolutely. And you do whatever you, and it looks, and actually, uh, you know, no homophobic thing here, but you you actually look like you, you reel people in. You know, you kind of have that infectious thing. Like, you're like, man, this nigga is enjoying the shit out of this song. <laughs> yeah. song. You know, yeah. his yeah. delivery, what you're trying to capture and also, you know, trying to make them ladies feel what you're saying is the mm -hmm. same thing. You look like you're enjoying yourself yeah. more than you ever have. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, thank you for that first, but it's a, it's a truth that we decided to live, right? Mm -hmm. So when we decided to bet on ourselves, we just ultimately said unapologetically, we're just gonna do it our way, right? And we just don't have a we're gonna we're have a good do, ass we time. Whatever come with it, whatever come with it, whatever, whatever, come, with it. Uh, whatever come with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. like we can take that loss. We can we can shoulder that loss because it's ours. That's great, man. That's it's so ours great. to lose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. want to lose, be like, man, all the ideas, man, this is all y'all ideas. Y'all mm -hmm. said that this was going, but no, mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that position. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I, I, we want to be the guys that said, this is it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And if it don't work, it's on us. Yeah. No problem. We'll no, take and, that. And, the, and, the, and it goes back to Solar Records, mm -hmm. where you say, you know, Dick Griffey allowed you guys to have a different type of freedom. All the freedom. Mm -hmm. All the and and you for want. you to tap a young baby face in LA Reed and be Absolutely. like, okay, maybe these records don't work for y'all group. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to need those, though. Absolutely. You exactly. know what I mean? So, exactly. so and I want to say to both of you guys, man, because we run into this all the time because of who we are as a group. Young cats like you won't even come up and say, man, I got this song, man, this dope song for the whispers. They're almost like intimidated at the fact that we're not going to hear it. Right. Our minds are so wide open to anybody that brings us a song, a mm -hmm. hit song. So I'm just telling you, brother, if you, because I know what, how you niggas can write. All right, so I'm telling you right now. I'm, telling you, I'm, I'm opening the, the door to you right now. Hey, mark that, because we know how you niggas can write. Mark that. So we can use that. Yeah, 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 so, yeah don't, yeah, don't be afraid. And, and listen, listen, and this is, this is worldwide. This is the all producers all and producers, writers. Yeah, exactly. And this is why we created, this is why we created, you know, this That's show. True and why we chose to do a podcast so that we could continue to bridge the gaps. Yes. Because we even find that with, within the industry in itself, uh, you know, it can be a, a 10 year gap mm -hmm. from one artist to the next and they'll just think they can't get to them. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh man, if only I could call. Yeah. You actually could, you, you can, can call. call. Yeah. Absolutely. Somebody's nephew, somebody cousin, the, the A&R probably might still be the same from yeah. the last, like, but I think this thing happens where in black music, this aging out thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't right. happen in anything else. That's yeah, true. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's only, it only really happens in, in our only, industry. Only in our, our industry. And you know what I mean? And right, to right, us, yeah. where right. it's just like, oh man, them old niggas. Mm -hmm. like, what do you mean them old niggas? Yeah. Everybody is doing music. Mm -hmm. Like music is music. Yeah, and yeah. if you can come up with a great record, 
Absolutely. No expiration date on that. It's no expiration date on that. Like I, I always say that you know it's the only thing that's the clo- music is the closest thing to being able to hit the lottery. Absolutely. Because yeah. mm-hmm. exactly any day you right. can wake up. Absolutely. If you yeah. come you up it? with cha cha slide, oh, <laughs> right. I don't care how old you are. Absolutely right. You're right, my brother. You right. know what I mean? Right. So right. Right. I think we get confused in thinking whatever is those you know. 10, 15 records they're going to play on the radio over and over and over are those 20 records they're going to play in that club that night are the only songs that exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just not the case. No. But I can tell you were raised by an old school person. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because Absolutely. just what you're saying right now, most people don't understand that. Yeah. You, it's always like you have a, an expiration date because you're not, you may not be relevant today, like you said, but tomorrow you could be relevant again i mean like that at any moment at any moment at any moment and the problem with the the younger artists is they don't even revere those artists you know they don't even come back and say you know some maybe it might be nice to do something with the whispers or it might be cool to do something with this person kind of collaborate yeah they're like okay he's old like you said them niggas is old they they can't do it anymore but you don't know <laughs> right if you don't try <laughs> you know, and they don't come through the door with a song because like you said they're scared they like well i can't get to him yeah you can get to him you know yeah. i, I didn't announce my phone number <laughs> all over the guy then. <laughs> call me uh <laughs> and you know all you gotta do is call okay. we have and the 1-800 you know, line yeah exactly right, right. accepting donations <laughs> yeah. Songs. No, but, that, but that is something that that ultimately we want to we want to make a shift we want to bridge mm-hmm. that gap we want to bridge that gap yeah. and that's, that's why good. that's why we're here yeah mm-hmm. so that that hopefully these things start to happen instead of it just being like i want to sample your record right right, right. how about right. you tap in with me mm-hmm. just, right just, absolutely all right tap in with you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i mean it's, yeah. it's it it can happen either way um and you guys have and, and speaking of samples even from and the beat goes on to like most people when they hear that kick in they think Will Smith, Miami, about to come in. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what I mean? amazing. We've been told that. Yeah, isn't that amazing? You know what I mean? Like as soon as because it's, yeah. it's, it's that lick that is so. Yeah, you know it's it. Leon Silvers, man. That's you it. know it yeah. lick, from boy. the jump. So yeah, baseline in there, boy. Depending on who it is, right? They're gonna be like, oh no, that's the whispers. <laughs> and then somebody gonna be like, man, that's Miami. Yeah, Will Smith on the generation, man. You know what I mean? So like, so when he sampled the record, did it kick up? You know, for you guys as well, where it was like people were, or was it so far? No, in between. Well, the thank two God songs? it brought it brought it back. It brought back some money. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, what, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah especially for Leon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it yeah, our lives. Changed, yeah. yeah. But us too, though. Yeah. You know, when yeah. when Will did it, it was a it was a whole new generation. Okay, but you know how the publishing and that works. Uh-huh. It comes back. So yes, thank God it it redone it. But what you guys are doing that I like. My grandkids like hip hop. Mm-hmm. You guys are keeping it R and B. The word R and B. Yeah, we can exist together, hip hop and R and B. You guys prove it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Thank God, y'all. Are, they don't say hip hop. You're young and you, yeah, you sing hip hop, but y'all keeping it R and B. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna put that in front of everything. 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 Please for don't us. stop doing mm-hmm. that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, like it goes back to that essence. Like we, we love women. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so. Catering to them, that's what I always yeah. felt like. That's what R and B was about. Absolutely. Like I mean, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm pulling up in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I may hint to what I got on, mm-hmm. but the reason why I'm pulling up like this and yeah, the reason why I even put this on is exactly. because of home. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's because real, of that huh? damn woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't get my hair cut for me. <laughs> <laughs> not just exactly. no, right. I do not yeah, yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't care if a dude say two words about my outfit. I'm just not here for you. I got. I got an interesting question. <laughs> it's three of y'all, and only two of us, so don't beat us up. Uh, <laughs> and y'all twins, so I. Yeah. And that's the other part. I don't know if you guys know. I come from a family where. And my original group with my brothers, the Neutrons, my two brothers were twins. Really? Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, no no kidding. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, no. right wow. Okay. Yeah, my two brothers are twins. So I, I grew up in a household of twins. Oh, yeah, I know, you know how y'all get out. Yeah, you know that, right? <laughs> yeah, you ain't never lie. So, <laughs> a song for Donnie, which I love. Mm-hmm. And this Christmas, 
Am I tripping by feeling like it's the same record? It is. It is. Oh, there's no question. It is. It is. Listen, let me, I, yeah, let me explain, explain the backstory. Explain what happened. Oh, please. Yeah. Tell them what happened. Tell them. <laughs> Carrie Lucas, the wife of Dick oh, Griffin, Dick Griffin. Uh-huh. wrote the lyrics. the lyrics to Song for Donnie. Okay. Mm. But the melody. The melody is from This Christmas. This Christmas. And let me give you the backstory of Donny Hathaway. Back in the day, we toured, we played clubs. We'd open on a Thursday, go Thursday through Sunday, and you close. We came to Chicago, happened to be on a Sunday when Donny Hathaway was closing closing. his four-day stint. So we got there to hear his closing act. We had never heard a voice like that in our life. We got to, we're sitting in the audience. We see this little stick guy, apple cap. You can't see his face. All you hear is his voice. Is his voice. Hmm. Me and Scotty, we were like in a trance. Stunned, to be honest with you. She didn't need a microphone. Mm-mm. The vibrato that you talk about? Yeah. That hmm. He yeah. did that. Boy, that that man thing. would reach out, man, playing the piano. We sat there stunned. We had never heard an R&B voice like that. That was our first coming into contact with Donny Hathaway. Never forgot it. We went on when Kerry wrote the lyrics to Song for Donny. Dick Griffey, he said, man, you guys love Donny Hathaway so much. Let's create a scholarship fund. Mm. And we gave out five scholarships for kids to go to college in the name of Donnie Hathaway. That's, wow. what he, that's what he meant to us. So we talked about who's some of your favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Donnie, Marvin, uh, Ray Charles, these guys. Jesse that, Belvin. Jesse Belvin that created the music that we hear. But Donnie Hathaway by far. Is me and him. We've never heard nothing like that. As long but in answer lived. specific to your, we, the melody that you hear this Chris, we decided to take it. We call it free as yeah. a ballad, right? Because if you notice, Donnie's version is, it's the same yeah. song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just slow it down and do again. We back to the reason why I want to do it like that because I want to do what I felt. Listen, mm-hmm. that's the way that I is, felt. This Christmas is the most player. Holiday song of all time. Mm-hmm. Hey, thank you. Listen, oh, you. it is kind of like music. Yeah, is man. It was for it was sure inspired by Donnie Hathaway. I just wish you could have got to meet him. We only met him once. You know, he eventually committed suicide. But this, so you, you guys had only met him one time. One time. We had he lived, we would have gotten to. Yeah. But man. He was a guy, you know, in our industry, man, you see people with our big names that got all this talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was him. You know, him and Roberta Flack, they went on to make all the music. But, man, Donnie, like you from the church, you heard him sing. Well, first of all. We talk about feel. Yeah, Yeah. That that, that, man had more feel in his voice. That's what I'm talking about. That's feel. In his straight ahead. That's feel. He didn't have to do nothing. He could hum. Man, he he could just make you run you crazy. That's feel. That's what I call feel. His daughter got the same thing. Same thing. Yeah, that's what Scotty's talking. When we say feel, think of Donnie Hathaway. He had more feel than anybody I ever heard in my life. You know, maybe, and Marvin was kind of the same way. Yeah, Marvin Gaye was like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Marvin Gaye was a guy, man. You see, Marvin, he he'd grab you and hold you so long, till <laughs> both of y'all would get nervous because he wouldn't let go. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my, I swear, That's man. Sure. Marvin Gaye said, "Man, and you'd be man. sitting there, he's 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 gonna let me go." Man. <laughs> but yeah. you heard what's and going on, voice. the way Marvin felt. Yeah, That's it. He brought in basketball players to be on that song. It was all feel, man. Wasn't nothing planned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to hear Barry Gordy say, "Man, I don't know about that." That's too crazy. What's wrong know. with you? What's, you know, what's he doing? Yeah. I mean, what's yeah. all but you know, he had to. He but finally he heard it, it but he couldn't was, hear that. Yeah. Right. Y'all would have heard that in one second. Yeah. yeah. I hope. <laughs> oh, oh man, I know yeah, you exactly. would have. So it was. Okay. It was like, you know, if you're talking about song structure, like. It wasn't regular. No. no. no it wasn't, it wasn't that's what made it, was, it so good. It wasn't that's regular. What, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. It was literally, it, it was literally for, as we keep on saying, it was literally just feel. feel. It's free. It was and what, free. What, how do you yeah. feel? Like covering moment. a Marvin song 
as I've tried, you know what I mean? I did like a live orchestra version of Distant Lover. Covering that song was the most difficult cover ever. Because mm-hmm. Marvin yeah. would start <laughs> at the top of the song and go all the way down mm-hmm. with every background track. Right. And every now and then, something completely different. Yeah, we'll <laughs> exactly. Which just pop up. And like, oh, no, go back. Go back. I, I got to get that. Yeah. Go back. Move forward. I got to get yeah. that. But do and, you know Marvin's history? Similar to yours. Gospel. He sang with the with the uh, uh, Moon Glows. Him no. and Farvey Fuqua. He came out of a gospel vocal group. Stand-up vocal group. Mm. And he went from there to what's going on. So he was, I mean, he was, you know, his dad was a preacher, mm-hmm. but he came from gospel. But he just was, just had this God gifted talent, man. But he wrote I mean, more. He probably wrote more when, because Marvin was so emotional. Yeah. So, I mean, very emotional. His heart was hurt by women and stuff. He wrote some of his best stuff when he was hurt. Hear yeah. my dear. Yeah, hear my dear. <laughs> my, One of my favorite man, songs. I can only imagine how they do it. Oh, boy. I didn't mean to look at you, wife. I'm just thinking about my own wife. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with you, right? Boy. Yeah, I mean, you better he's, stick he's, around because the boy, divorce proceedings. Boy, I'm going to call some like, people. Uh, and I know you, I know to me, and, and I just heard it just recently. The best version of the national anthem to me ever done is by Marvin Gaye. Well, again, back to I think he thinks so, too. I think he's... No, no, no. I'm a toss-up. I'm I'm tossed up between two. Who's the other? Um, Marvin, and they're two different different ones. Totally. Two Two totally different ones. (laughs) Marvin is by far the greatest feeling of a national anthem. It's a group. Exactly. It's the it's greatest turn into a group. group turn into the greatest a group. feel. It's, yeah. it, it was like, that's how you were. It was like, who yeah, that's is him. this cool? <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. He just, yeah. he was like, he was magic. He had his shades on. It was full flesh. Oh, it's full pimping. It was like, you're right. He the national anthem. He was pimping America, right? Is there hoes that come out I'm sure it is. <laughs> with the national anthem, who's <laughs> most coming with the national anthem? Oh, I got, got my money. Oh, who's <laughs> I need it in twenty stars. <laughs> it was that was no, no nothing like, but but the one that I think was executed to perfection. Wait, it's Whitney Houston. Oh, man. oh yeah, she did. Yeah, she that just killed was it. she just killed it. That was. That was in of the orchestration. Yes. Right. Yeah. The deep, it was a full production. The core yeah, deviations. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. strength. Oh my God. The, yeah. like, the jets flying. Oh yeah. 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 It was all yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it was just Yeah. Oh, it was just it was it was magical. Did she do it in a sweatsuit? She, she did a yeah, sweatsuit. She did a sweatsuit, yeah. She did a sweatsuit. Yeah. Sweat yeah. yeah. Listen, she just said, I'm you know what? I just, I'm I'm about, just yeah, exactly. I just finished soundtrack. Exactly. I'm going to just keep this on. Exactly. exactly. And, yeah, absolutely. And right. those two yeah. are yeah. my favorite yeah. version. If I'm, ever, if I'm ever chasing a national anthem moment, it's yeah. one of those yeah. two moments. Uh-huh. They call it for like for Tank to sing. They're like, they're like they got a keyboard. I'm like, ah, oh, he won't go more. Here he go. At some point, at some point, I'm you going to do that. I'm going to make that Marvin drum track. And I'm going to sing the national anthem just like that uh, in a suit, in shades. I don't know they're going to clown me on the shade room. I know. I don't care. I have to recreate that you. moment that was just for moment. me. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. moment. Yeah, one of the greatest that. moments. Um, one of the, one of the things we love we love to ask is like. Your 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 feelings after your first hit record. Your your movements after your first hit record. What did you what, buy? What did after, you well, buy? You know, and the beat goes on. And I'm glad you asked this question because we, we get this we get asked this a lot, and mm-hmm. we have you get three differences. First of all, and this is the most young people they need to understand this. This shows you how one record can change your life completely. Mm-hmm. We went from, I went from being able to get my clothes out of the cleaners to not having to be able to put them in the cleaners. Mm. If you could, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but we went, our lives changed yeah. completely. One day you over here 
and the next day you way over here. Yeah. And for, it, for you squares, that means that he didn't have to wear the same thing twice. Exactly. Then you get this shit out of here. We're going to go ahead and finally, give, I can give finally give myself out the cleaners. <laughs> but, and the beat goes on. Now, we did know the night that we finished it that it was our first hit record. What we didn't know is how our lives were going to change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because from that point on, in answer to your question, from 1980 to 1987, everything we had was either platinum or gold. Mm. Huh. Mm. Yeah, talk about it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. Go ahead and crack your whip. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> and them real records. Oh, no. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not even trying to crack the whip. I'm just telling you yeah. the honest God truth. Yeah. Yeah. But to go from what you said, like from, from poor to that, mm. I can't even think of a word to describe how great it was. You ask me, what do, what do we buy? Like, I remember I went, <laughs> I shouldn't even be saying it, but it's the truth. <laughs> I went and bought a Mercedes, and I took the money out of my foot <laughs> oh! <laughs> to get it. Yeah! <laughs> Put it in his sock. He, used he to didn't believe in that. He called, leg, he called one so leg to check it, from, the other leg was saving. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was saving. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 listen, you asked me, I'm He was a walking bank. <laughs> walking bank. <laughs> he would not put his money in the I bank. I would not put my My mother used to say, fool, do you know what a bank is? <laughs> you have to start with fool. <laughs> fool. Exactly. Do you know what a bank is? Yeah, yeah mama, but I don't trust the bank. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I didn't. That's Oakland hustle. He can't yeah. live. See, again, but did. I wasn't the only one up right. in Oakland. We all, as you, as you, all was as in that did. same mentality. Everybody had that. But anyway, when I, when I went and bought my first Mercedes, they thought I was a drug dealer because I had all the cash. Mm. And the guy said, "Sir, listen, sir, uh, we need a check. We need a check. <laughs> I, said, I said, no, how much would it cost? Thirty-seven thousand three hundred something. But I had all the money, cash <laughs> on you, on, on me. Yeah." yeah. So, when, but again, that's what we went, that's what the hit record did. Yeah, yeah. From 1980 to 87, Lord said, thank you. And I tell you, yeah. the funny part is what happened to me was once, when we first got the first gold album, it, for, for, it was like, a, it's almost like getting your PhD, mm-hmm. you know, because you finally got a record, because I wasn't sure, you know, I thought in my heart that it was a, a hit record, but in my but not sure until the actual sales go on yeah, and somebody right, brings right, that right, gold right. album saying speak, you yeah. sold half a million. <laughs> yeah. I felt like we had finally arrived. We had finally got our PhD. People really liked us and signed on to us. And so from that point on, after we got that gold record, my first purchase <laughs> was a nine eleven nine thirty Porsche, mm. brand new, 1979, because 79 is when we were actually, it's funny, I bought a 79 because in 79, we had only worked like two or three dates. And we were all thinking about going to get jobs and when we wound up being in the studio with Leon and he wrote that song. And then once that song hit, I said, I want a Porsche. I've been a Porsche man all my life. I want another Porsche. And it was funny because I went to the dealership to get this Porsche and I'm standing there and nobody's helping me. They're mm. just looking at me. We've all been there. Yeah. You know? mm. And I'm yeah. walking at this Porsche that's on the floor, and I'm saying, man, this is so bad. Yeah, there's anthracite gray, wheels, everything I wanted. And I stood there in that place for about 45 minutes. Before anybody said anything to you? Nobody said nothing to me, so I decided I'm going to leave. You know, I'm, I'm pissed off now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm walking out. About this time, This another salesman is just coming on shift. He says, uh, can I help you? I said, yeah. I said, because obviously nobody in there wants my money. He said, what are you, what are you here for? I said, I'd like to buy that 7930 on the show in Florida. There. He says, really? I said, yeah. He says, well, what can I do? I said, well, I'm going to pay cash for it. I, I want that car. So can you, here's $5,000. I'll be back with cashier's check for it. Because I didn't do the checking and savings. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do that. The leg bank. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do the yeah. leg bank. <laughs> and so I bought that car. And I think, Walt, you were in the store. You went in the store and mm-hmm. some guy told him, says, oh, yeah, well, I just sold this to this guy who sings with the whispers. And he says, his name is Val. Yeah, he said, yeah, that's who I sold it to. <laughs> so I learned my lesson from, see, he kept his in the left and right leg. 
Nick would keep his in his drawers. <laughs> he slept with his money in his drawers. <laughs> oh that stopped after Nick went and sat down on the toilet in the middle of the night. And forgot he had his money in his drawers. <laughs> Pulled his pants down and flushed the toilet <laughs> and everything he he, he earned. Oh, he always getting too much money. Oh, <laughs> too much money. Too much money. He man. We didn't know his, what to do with it. That he, was the problem. He flushed that his, so he flushed his all his money down the, down toilet, the toilet and he went running down to the front desk and <laughs> is there a catch tank or this some way you gotta oh. be <laughs> where does the shit go? <laughs> where, where, where does the shit go? Because yeah, I'm mean, willing to go in. I'm willing to. Oh, oh, you yeah. want the shit? Oh, you want the shit? <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time he put his money in his drawers. Wow, yeah, that's how crazy things were back in the day. He just got too much money. He, he, he. That was the second thing he did. The first thing he did, me and him, was blow my mama house. Yeah, that's yeah. the first thing me okay. and him did. Yeah. yeah, for any cars and all. He went down there late and with that. My mom couldn't believe it, but that was the greatest feeling in, in the, the world. world to go buy your parents they're here. Yeah, my dad had passed by then, but. Man, you tell me, I, to this day, I just think about it and I just get happy. Yeah. Because we, we had been around, this is crazy, in 1980, we had been around 10 years before that. So we weren't, that's the good thing that happened to us. We weren't young and foolish to the yeah. point we had been striving yeah. for 10 years. So when it finally happened, even though they bought the cars, mostly we did some sensible things with it. Mm -hmm. you, know? yeah. but you didn't get no car then. You didn't. No, nah, I got it later. But no, yeah. first thing I wanted to do was see my mama smile. You yeah. know, yeah, that's that. That's what I. Was Here's a question as it pertains to business, um, just so we can get some more information out there. How did you feel about looking back on it, the structure of your business at the time, mm -hmm. like in terms of the fairness or the unfairness of it, or the things that were just so glad you asked out of control that. Mm -hmm you know, should have been a certain way and mm -hmm. weren't. Like, what was happening at that time? It was structured to a point to where you were only meant to go so far as mm -hmm. a black artist. You know, the, the structure of the business was made, was, was made to, you come into a record company, they sign you to a deal, and depending on who you are, the clout that you had before you got there, you might get eight points as an artist. Eight? Eight. Yeah. That's crazy, ain't it? Wow. Eight points. Then Stevie came along, you know, with his success at, at Motown, and he was a writer, producer, and he could talk about owning all of his stuff. But in our era, you were just trying to get the exposure. You would do anything. Right. And it limited. You, you, you just were limited. You couldn't get, but only so far, you know, uh, as, and especially as a young black stand up vocal groups. Mm. Stand-up vocal groups were, they were always afraid that them five guys might mess with some white women. Mm. So they were, they, were, they were things that happened with the Temptations and the Four Tops and, mm -hmm. you know, traveling through the South. Yeah. You had to be careful because you represented, here's five good-looking black men standing up doing it. Young girls invariably going to come in. You know they're going to like Whatever you. Whatever race. So you know, yeah. so you were just limited in terms of your ability, and then it depends on how intelligent you were. You know, if you were, did you understand? Do you know about publishing, copyrights? No, we were young. We just wanted to be on stage. We wanted the girls to scream. We didn't learn about that. Dick Griffey was the guy that educated us about publishing. You know, Nick was our only writer, but we under we didn't understand publishing the way you guys did. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, writers weren't compensated with the way they should have been. They still aren't. To this yeah. day. Mm -hmm. But the, but here's the ratio. If a hundred million was made back then, mm -hmm. you actually say, well, how much of that should I get from a fair standpoint? Man, you were lucky. <laughs> if a hundred million was made, you might get two, three thousand, maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars. That's Twenty thirty. That's if a hundred million is generated. You you now today you know what records generate. Right. We are talking hundreds of millions of dollars. You're not even knowing what this. Generated. You didn't well, have you a clue words, of what that was. You took the words out of my mm -hmm. mouth. First you didn't know, know what it you was. Know, when you say no, we didn't know what was generated. Because I mean, first of all, back then, even now, when you say hundred million, it didn't make me faint. I don't know about you. Yeah. yeah. But back then, not only would you faint, you may not ever fucking wake up. A hundred million dollars? Yeah. Nobody ever dreamed that kind of money was being even made. Right. 
you know, but then you going along with the obedience of being a black person. Yeah. That comes into play, whether you want to, you know. So you don't even get to what, like where y'all are, we never got to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no, y'all. You know, you stayed in your place, and, you know, you did what you were supposed to do. You were obedient. Let's put it like that. You're yeah. happy with a little. Happy with a little. Wow. So Instead when you of talk the greater about good, somebody I mean, which you could have had. A uh, hundred billion was generated. You wouldn't have probably believed it anyway. Anyway, yeah. No. Because those numbers don't even make <laughs> sense. Don't, it don't even make sense. Don't even count. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's why we say to young people today, but we don't have to, because young people like you, you understand, a hundred million dollars don't mean that much to you. It's a lot of money. But you understand what a hundred million dollars is. Yeah. Yeah. In our day, we had no clue. No clue. What a hundred million dollars. I mean, what it even looked like. It, what what it, it even. Like. You know, think about that. Yeah. You know, y'all do. Yeah. Now I remember having a conversation with my with, with my father and a couple of his guys, some uncles, and they were talking about sports and how they used to look at athletes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they used to be like, "That's the closest." They thing. ain't got no money like us. <laughs> absolutely they used to really look at at like you know because it was just a different time absolutely it was a different time and, and sure. what you know what guys were getting in the streets compared to you know what guys were getting legally mm-hmm. absolutely you know that at one point that was the way to get rich absolutely to get really rich mm-hmm. absolutely was more mm-hmm. so in, a, in, a, in an illegal way right. absolutely exactly. we didn't have all of these ways you know from now with music or with acting or with you know with sports Spring where you can sponsorships the ad sponsorships yeah. and the, you know all these other things that that all the ancillary things that come along with yeah, it absolutely. now yeah absolutely before it was just like oh yeah if you want that Cadillac yeah, you better get to hustle <laughs> mm-hmm. absolutely so I so I completely I completely understand mm-hmm. what you're saying I, I also want to know from the road sense. Mm-hmm. How did that work? Because obviously, you know, you have you have the you have the deal structures and you have the way that that works out. Like you said, you were lucky if you're getting eight points. What mm-hmm. most people don't understand that eight points breaks down to eight cents, eight, eight cents. pennies. Mm-hmm. Thank you, eight pennies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because a lot mm-hmm. of people, don't, you know, they they've made all of these terms mm-hmm. to, to try to hide it, yeah. Yeah. to hide yeah, it. You, you know go. what I mean? But that there you go. where you know you don't really just look into it. You like you can you can. I mean, the the sad thing is. You can have a conversation with some of the artists that are out now, mm-hmm. and they don't even know what that breaks down to. No, all right. Boy, that's, even that's, with all of this information, yeah, that's the sad part. Yeah, now, it is sad. like like Tank said earlier, we 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 listen to you guys with grace, mm-hmm. and at a different, you know, it, 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 it's. The scales are tipped in a different way because mm-hmm. you guys had no idea. No mm-hmm. idea. There was no way to truly well, no even find out. Yet, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And to our fault, we weren't educated enough to know that to ask the question, if there's 100 pennies and eight is gone, what happens to the other 92? Right. That's common sense. Yeah. But when you want to be on stage and you want the exposure, what, the, 92. The, what, the what, business what, was built on that. Though. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. The, built, the business was on built the on that. On the sexy of they that. They, that's they just, they just, they, they just want to sing. They just want to sing. They just want to They just want to sing to them girls after. At the end. Right. They the just, show as well. They just they're exactly. not worried about that. They want, a, exactly right. they want a little wine, a little, yeah. wine. A little woman. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And maybe a car. Yeah, right. and maybe a car. Yeah, yeah. You got some Nikes. in there too. Yeah, right. some little, you throw, yeah. throw a taste. Yeah, yeah. 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to yeah. sprinkle, throw a little dust on it. You're going to sprinkle some dust on there too. They, they, they manipulated it in such a way because, you know, the gifted are very much invested in the gift. In the gift. In the gift. Mm-hmm. We're very much invested in the gift. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. we're always trying to figure out how to be better mm-hmm. within our gift. At mm-hmm. no point do we stop and say, you know what I'm saying? Well, let's talk about those eight points mm-hmm. because sometimes I mean, that gets in the way of the math gift. doesn't mm-hmm. correlate with the gift. No, right? Yeah. No, exactly right. We just, we just, I'm just here to sing, baby. Right? Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Who gonna, yeah. who gonna pick that? Okay, you got it. All right, you go pick that up. I yeah. don't worry about yeah. me. Exactly. Like that's all that's we're all there you're, for. Yeah, that's right. No question. Yeah. And yeah. even in the beginning of my career, like the things that I could have done. With my early success, mm-hmm. I didn't know to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. nobody showed me. Nobody taught yeah. me. Yeah, nobody sure. was like, "Now with this, since you have a top three record on the Hot 100, this is what you should go ask for. This Absolutely. is what you should turn that That's into. Exactly and right. then now you can be your own." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But 
you know. It's not advantageous no, to anyone I was, on the business side to tell you that. I was still You're being right. conditioned to to be a player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was being conditioned to stay a player. We want you to be the best player you can be. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you got to stay on the team. Yeah, yeah. Stay. But you, you yeah. look, you look at the way that, like I said, we go back to the terms. We go back to, just even the way it was worded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The masters, mm-hmm. the slave, the slave. <laughs> Come on, now. people don't even know about that. Yeah. That's why Prince about, wrote that. Yeah, why you think yeah. he wrote that on his job? And then, mm-hmm. and then the owners. Yeah, the, the owners. owners. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you yeah. if you're looking mm-hmm. at music. They're putting it right in front of you, yeah. what yeah. this thing is. Exactly Do you right. own your masters? That's exactly. No. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, and there's, I mean, there's a quote that I put on, on one of my pages that says, um, you know, we, we own our own masters. You know what I mean? The masters don't own us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's right. Mm-hmm. And that's something that, you know, at one point we had to make that decision for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you look at it from that standpoint, you will approach it differently. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's true. If you look at it like, okay, if they own my masters, they own me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think you would Thank sell you. them as fast. Thank you. Yep. Exactly. Or give right. them up as right. fast. Right. That's right. But I don't think that that's ever though that's never really put in front of someone to make that decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But even beyond that, even when we went on the road, and and thank you, you get attest to this because we've all gone through the same things. You go on the road, you make all of this money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as your sock is full. Right. Your sock right. is yeah, full. Literally. Oh, but the other right. side of it is that we weren't given the tools to sit down at, we never had a dinner table where the whole family sits down and your dad says, you know, you should put your money into this stock or you should not necessarily go out there and buy all them gold chains and, and cars and, and that kind of stuff. Maybe before you even buy a house, because a house is the worst investment, maybe you need to go out there and buy you a bunch of apartment buildings or 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 buy you a shopping center or yeah. something or like that. Or a parking lot. <laughs> something <laughs> where you can have residual Sorry. income coming in. We didn't have those conversations. So we were actually not knowing what to do with our money. So what we do is we pop bottles. On, we buy the gold it. chains. Yeah, yeah. We had the cars. Mm-hmm. We get a house. Yeah. We bang a bunch of girls. Talk about it. And then get caught up. This was in, the past, though. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, right. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Please, this is the past. Long time ago. Long, long time ago. Okay. He said, let me clean up this. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear the excitement? Did you hear the excitement? Yeah. 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 What else did you do, LaBelle? But the excitement, though. The excitement don't last long. And when you're married and the wife find out, she says, oh, shit, I want that half of I everything. Need half. I need half. Yeah. Of I want that child support. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. No, no, because they get half and they get alimony. Yeah, okay. exactly. Mm. So then you wind up saying, damn, I fucked up really yeah. bad. Yeah. you know. And so if you get that second chance, which mm-hmm. a lot of people don't get, to reboot yourself and start again, I bet you a hundred dollars to a dime if you get that second chance, you don't do things the oh, same. No, you, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's what I was asking about this the, the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and when you guys get these this record or these records, because you guys have multiple records, yeah. it's not like just the one record. It's, we can go down the list. How is that? Is is it connected, or is it separate at that point? Because you know now. They'll even try to get a piece of your performance. Your money. Yeah, oh, no, right. they don't have your tour. They didn't do that. Back so then. back no. then, no, it, it was, was completely separate. Yeah. Right. So then you're the really money. not thinking about the other oh, side no. of your business. Yeah. No, no. Because, because you're making like, so much money. Been, for that you side. might have brought your room. attention. The paper yeah. bags. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. And that's why I asked. No, you're doing sellout business in the concerts, and that's separate and apart from royalties and publishing. Two different sets of income. Yeah. And as you say, when you selling out. 15,000 seaters, Luther at his height was going. I mean, he was with CBS selling plenty of records. Yeah. But I guarantee you it was separate and apart. Yeah. In our case, it definitely was. They didn't They didn't associate the two with each other. Right. We, just, we did the Because you were just having to get money, that money from the road. And then you get a royalty statement. Mm-hmm. And that's when you start arguing. 
And now you got enough money you go, off the yeah. road. You get some lawyers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah buddy. Yeah. That's when you, you want to spend that money from the road for the exactly. lawyers. Exactly. Right. So exactly. As you say, happened. you start arguing. They, start they never arguing. gave me a chance to argue because they never sent me a royalty statement. <laughs> <laughs> you never got to wait a minute. You got to be kidding me. In my first Ever? deal, in those. I didn't manage him then. In those. <laughs> he did not. In those eight. But like I got signed in 98. To 2010, I saw one royalty statement. Wow. Are you kidding me? Well, we're kidding talking me. about today. I saw one. Yes, that's, wow. that's unbelievable. But Are you serious? At, at that time, I was just playing my game. Oh, no. Yeah. And I understand. And my time. Yeah. Until, no, you were you being know, blinded by that, that aura well, that comes from being that a big too. star selling but, out. But then the times where I wanted to ask those tough questions and, and, I, and I did things. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And that 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 kind of you know put me in a bad position. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I really had to be smart about mm-hmm. how I fought that battle because mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. have the money to fight it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I didn't know if I had the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. With the time that I had, I was, I just need to focus on music. Right. Mm-hmm. Plus, One they got these, more money. Than yeah, they you. got way more money. So you, they you got know. way more acts. That's right. They, yeah. they can keep going. They can keep yeah. going in that lawyer's office. I, I got to focus on a record that's going to change mm-hmm. the verbiage. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes. Yeah. The the negotiations. Mm-hmm. I got to focus on that. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and and that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Um, Understandable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now so, we're talking about thirty five years later. Luke. Think about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still. Mm-hmm. Still. Forty years later. Still. I guess this was happening with us, and here we talking about forty years later. You went eight years and didn't see a royalty statement? I saw one. That is amazing to me. I've, wa- I wa- I've walked away from a lot of money as a means to an end. Yeah. Just so I can get to the other side. Get to the next step. Get to the next step. Wow. That's amazing. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, it's funny because when people watch it or people see it, you know, all they see are videos and all of these Absolutely. things. You know what I'm saying? They don't know that while some of these videos are out. Yeah. That, you know, some of us are reaching in the ashtray, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, digging out coins to put mm-hmm. gas in a gas tank. Mm-hmm. 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 They don't realize that. That's mm-hmm. yeah. And that was very much oh, yeah. where, where I've been, mm-hmm. yeah. trying to get to the next moment. And the cost of that video was on the dotted line. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, Come that's on, what, when you see you start arguing. But see, I say this, though, in our case. We, we weren't educated now that I understand it. We met Mike Gardner, our manager now. And I thought I was a pretty educated guy, but I wasn't. Because if you're educated, you have a sense of being curious about what's happening to you. Everything. But when you're doing what we, like you, we're out here performing, the girls having fun, and you don't want to look. When they charge you for that video, you didn't even know you was being charged. You thought they were paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what you thought. Everything is recorded. Until so you, you meet someone you that off. explains to you how this is a business industry. It's called show, but it's business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And until you understand that, you're going to be victimized by it. We certainly were. But, you know, but I'm amazed that as that young as you, you are. As young as you are, yeah. Yeah. But do you remember? I remember I was talking to one of the lakeside. And he said to me, and it, it's, it may sound funny, but it, it blow your mind. He said, man... How do you go on tour and come home and be broke? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That was happening. But that's what was happening. I've seen it. He I've went on it. tour, play sold out. <laughs> you remember we was laughing, we went to the record store, and they they would they met these girls and they brought in the babies and all that. Yeah, they met some they girls and brought the, the, the <laughs> girls and the kids. Yeah, they brought them all to the, to all the uh, to, we would to sign the an sign autograph. They brought all of them. Yeah. You know, People they had the limos in. and they they had about five or six limos. Every limo there was paid for. Record company paid for it gladly. Didn't have no problem making you look good. But when you get back home... You can get that royalty oh, check yeah, in yeah, yeah. Yeah. That limo you was being charged. Us. Yeah, So you, you know, made us. this. But, yeah, you made this. Yeah, you made exactly. this. But you owe us. This is what, what you spent. This is what you owe us. That's, right. that's what you owe us. It's a negative here. If you yeah. can. Right. And young exactly. kids, y'all can thank God for y'all's podcast because yeah. you guys can explain this to young kids that are getting in this industry. Mm-hmm. You know, let they have to understand. Be educated. Man, Ain't nothing wrong the, with flying coach. Ain't hey, nothing. Nothing. Unless you're six <laughs> six, yeah, yeah, you're comfortable in a yeah. regular seat. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, they are, you know, as, as the flights get further, you want to lay down. Yeah, oh, yeah you want to lay down. You I ain't, going, you ain't going to Europe. <laughs> you don't need to fly first class from San Francisco to Los Angeles. No. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> 45 <laughs> minutes. <Damn old. laughs> I ain't getting on the plane. <laughs> so they, wait, they all sold out? I go tomorrow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, don't put me on no Southwest. <laughs> see some leather on Southwest. Right? <laughs> nice leather. It's Corinthian so let's leather. Get, let's, let's get to the mines, man. Let's, yeah. get, to the, let's get to them R&B mines. You want to talk to these brothers oh, about yeah, these mines? Yeah, Come on. Because they've been doing this a long time. They, you know, they got, they got mines on them. <laughs> got mines on them. <laughs> Second of our show, top five. Okay. I normally have my keyboard for this. <laughs> make up a song. <laughs> top five! Oh, <laughs> top five. Look, okay. Today we're going we're gonna to keep it simple. We want to know. Whispers. The whispers. The whispers. Your top five R&B artists. Mm. Male or female? Male or female? Group. Yeah. Okay. Go get five different answers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you go get three yeah. different yeah. answers. Yeah. Well, and some of us are going to say the same thing. Probably but so. we're probably going to, yeah. We're prepared. Yeah. The yeah. ones you agree on and, and, and the extras mm -hmm. you. Okay. Come on. Let's, let's get it. Okay. Yeah. Somebody kick it off. Start, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. uh, it's easy. For, uh, to me, it's easy. I start out with Donny Hathaway. Okay. Mm -hmm. No question. And I go down from him, I go to Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. After Marvin Gaye, I go to Jesse Belvin. Mm hmm. And then I go to two females that, as far as I'm concerned, and it's just me, that are my all-time favorite. One is white, one is black. Mm -hmm. The black one is Etta James, Oof. for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. The white one is Karen Carpenter. Mm. Mm. Yes. Ruben shook his head like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, bad lady, yeah. bad lady. The two, the two greatest female singers, as far as I'm concerned, Etta and Karen. Okay. Sheesh. That's my five. Mm -hmm. Who next? Mm -hmm. Who wants? Who wants? Who wants? Uh, okay, probably for me, I'm a probably I got a mixture of old school and new school. Uh, Nat King Cole, mm. one of my greatest. My mom hippie to this guy, Jackie Wilson, one of the greatest singers oh, and my. performers mm. on planet Earth. Yeah. Me being a tenor, Delphonics William Hart oh, was my William favorite. Hart. One of my favorite tenor singers ever on this planet that I, that I like. So female singer-wise would be Minnie Rippington, because mm. she was singing in the stratosphere before any of these ladies came along, knew there was a stratosphere. Yeah. And uh, the last one would be Marvin Gaye, because I like where he comes from emotionally. Yeah. I could always count on him to say something that will bring tears to your eyes. And I knew every masterful song that he came out with was based on whatever emotional thing that he was, that going, he was going through. through. So I could connect real. with him because yeah. Yeah. we've had broken hearts. Somebody tore our hearts out of our chest. Mm -hmm. So he would have a song that you play that and just kind of sit in your own little pity session and listen to that song all the time. So Marvin Gaye, those would be... You know, those would be nice. my people. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Scotty and I have, we both, Donny Hathaway. Mm -hmm. But I kind of put my, the people that I revere the most, there's a combination of how well they could sing, but how great of writers they were. For me, Curtis Mayfield, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. greatest black writer, if you had a choice of colors, which were when you choose my brother. When I heard that, um, I admire him for his ability. He wasn't a great vocalist, but his writing ability mm -hmm. made it's me. Incredible. His expression. Wow. Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. just nice. natural. The two greatest female singers to me that ever lived, Aretha Franklin, mm -hmm. number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially the young Aretha. Aretha. And Whitney. Mm. Whitney was God-given. She yeah. just, that thing that you saw she did, it, it, did you look at her eyes when she was yes. in that jogging suit? Yes. She was looking how amazed that we were amazed that she could do that. Yeah. Did, didn't you see that? Yeah. Because she yeah. did it so easy. Effortless. She said, what, what, they, what they tripping about? Right. I mean, I, I do this, do this like day. I do this. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That girl was so like gifted to me. Yeah. Mm. That's it for me. She just, she just had this flat-footed, just power. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, she was God. incredible. Yeah. 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 No, those lists are amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get another list going. Let's get another list going. Um. 
top five R and B songs. Mm. Ooh, mm. Mm. yeah, get tricky. Well, that's man. hard. That was mm. that was that mm. is hard. Mm. Yeah. Top, mm. top five. Well, R&B number one, song. For me okay. is what's going on? Kick it off. Kick that's, it off. Then that's that's the one song that Marvin made that he brought in other people. They were having a good time. It just evolved into the greatest. As far as I'm concerned, that song. My wife and I, we danced to the whole album. My album got so many different songs on there. But What's Going On, that's one of my favorite songs of all time. And then Luther, Luther Vandross, has a song called, uh, what is the title of it? His vocal gymnastics, to me, I ain't heard nobody. What is the song I'm well, thinking of? The, yeah, the, the, hit, the hit record he had? Yeah. Uh, woo, woo. Oh, man, I, it skips me. But his vocal gymnastics on it. Is it House Not Home? Is that the one he's? No, no, no. He's talking about his hit record. Uh-uh. Well, uh, that was a hit record. For it was a hit. I mean, but, but I loved it. Yeah. I love. You said song. He had a song, but what I what I related to is how he executed it as a vocalist. Mm-hmm. Luther Vandross, male vocalist, to me, and I mean, I've been around a lot of years. <laughs> I've heard a lot of singers. Luther, it's pristine for me. That's just what I like. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, you said songs, right? Yeah. You said yeah. top songs. Mm-hmm. Top oh songs. well, I, songs. I related to the guy. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. I guess oh. that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I'm gonna start doing? out with when I say songs R and B. Probably one of the biggest, but it was just one of my favorite. That would be me and Mrs. Jones. Yeah. That yeah. That, that that to me was when he did that. It brought in a whole new. And then uh, another song, one of my favorite songs, and it's R and B. Then go, you said, well, where you come with all these white acts? What you won't do? What you won't do for the love? Yeah. To me, that was the, one of the greatest written R and B songs. And when I found out he was white, I was stunned. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being. I, I said, wait a minute, how in the world? Yeah. One of the greatest songs that was ever recorded, as far as I'm concerned. So those two, me and Mrs. Jones. And then, oh, of course, I can leave out Jesse Belvin. Now, that's before you guys tell Yeah, yeah. But Put us he, up on that. Put us up on yeah, that. Yeah, he, he had a song called Good Night, Good Night My, my love. love. Good Night My Love. Good you Night My Love. You should listen to it. Go listen to it. listen to it. start saying it to my wife yeah, from now yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> Good Night My Love. Good Night My Love. Good Night My Love. Yeah. yeah. She's like, who you been talking to? <laughs> <laughs> who the hell you been talking to? Don't worry <laughs> with it. Don't worry Don't worry with it. Had that avocado toast waiting for me in the morning. Avocado <laughs> toast. <laughs> you're around. I say my love. Yeah. My love. Good night, my love. Oh, well, man. for me, you probably never heard this song, but I always liked it because it was a song that was written by this young lady. She's not here anymore on this planet, but uh, she took she, when she wrote the song because that's how I met my wife. I met my wife through Tina Marie. Because wow. my wife just sang with Tina Marie, okay. so mm-hmm. she happened to be on a cruise. But she wrote a song for us called Butter. 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 And she says, this is what a woman wants to hear from you guys. And when she sat there on her keyboard in her house and played that song, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's what a woman wants to hear. So, But it was done by us, so it's yeah. one of my favorite songs. Uh, you mentioned a song, I think it's called Hear My Dear. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Marvin, Marvin, Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Gay? Yeah. You were my wife. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Oh, oh, that's, my that's, woman. Yeah, that's that, that song, to me, you yeah. know, when yeah. he, with some of the things he said in that, man, just wanted captivating everything inside of you. That was That's one of my favorite songs, only because of his delivery, and I could hear the pain in his voice. That was one of it. And uh, any Delphonic song... Because I was yeah, a tenor, it didn't make any difference. Yeah, anyone, yeah, yeah boy, loves between, some Delphi. <laughs> between <laughs> Tom Bell and it. Linda Creed, who wrote some of the greatest songs in the, the stylistics. history, stylistics. Yeah. stylistics. He wrote for them. He wrote for Delphonics too. Yeah, you yeah. know, so in the early stages, yeah, we just worked with them last week. As a matter of fact, stylistics, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. any Bell. of any, you know, la 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 means I love you. That kind of stuff in the tone and him having that little baby thing kind of thing that he would did, do. I remember, I'm going to tell you this real quick story. I remember when I wanted to be a vocalist and I wanted to be in a group, my father wanted me to be a saxophone player, but there was nothing sexy to me in that saxophone <laughs> thing at all. <laughs> so I went to see the Delphonics. I, I, I respect <laughs> I went to see the Delphonics and I saw 
this nigga come by William Hart and sing women into a trance mm -hmm. where literally back in the day, you know, he wouldn't be doing that stuff now today, but he was, he must have slobbed 20 <laughs> women right yeah. from the front of the stage. And I was like, oh, that's the nigga oh, I want to be. That's what I want to be. That's who I want to be. That's who I want to be. So I went home and started working on my tenor as hard as I could because that, I mean, I just didn't find anything with playing a saxophone, but I knew that I wanted to be out there and I wanted to sing and all the women that you could get was like my motive. I didn't even think, of, like what Scott even wanted to say, I didn't think about no damn money. Yeah. I just wanted the to different do different type of currency. Just yeah, different game. <laughs> <guy. laughs> Get it right, boys. Different, different, different type, type of currency. And so, yeah. you know, Ooh. but any of the Delphonic stylistic songs, you know, all of those things, that's all I listened to when nice. I first met them. So when they heard me sing for the first time, you know, because I, me and Scotty became friends, uh, went to see them performance, and once again, I, I, this girl turned me on to him, but I went to see them at a performance, and I wanted to meet the Whispers. So I decided, okay, how can I meet the Whispers? Okay, if I go with somebody fine, <laughs> them niggas going to let me. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, he invited me back, probably trying to scoop on what I had, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But it got me through yeah. the door, and then me and Scotty became friends, mm -hmm. and I started picking him, up, picking him up all the time, uh, you know, when he was coming in L.A. from, from the oh. Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I was taking him back to the airport, and I uh, was Delphonic song came on and I started singing, not even thinking because I used to sing in my car all the time with nobody in there. And I looked around, oh, dang, I'm singing in front of this nigga. He's a professional singer. Yeah. He said, man, man, I didn't know you had that pretty falsetto. Why didn't you tell me you sang? I said, man, that, you know, our friendship's not based on that. Yeah. But I would be at every performance hoping one of them niggas get <laughs> called you. <laughs> <laughs> I could take get, take their place. Which one of them lactose intolerant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. That was yeah. And they and it happened. Yeah. You know, it yeah, happened. Yeah, and yeah. I was able to slide Good. into there and and uh took me a year before I walked on stage. I sang back behind the background in the wings yeah. with my mic set up there and yeah. sang and I could always sing, but Nicholas Caldwell was my biggest obstacle to get through because he was a choreographer. He says, this nigga got two left feet. He ain't going to make it. Mm -hmm. And Scotty begged him. He says, no, man, he, he don't use drugs. He's wearing penny loafer shoes, V-neck sweaters. He's <laughs> clean. He's, he's clean. clean. He don't yeah. use no drugs. He's, he's the guy. So Nick you know, said, you know, said well, we're going to do a, a national audition. And if we don't find another nigga in, them, new, <laughs> in that audition, then I'll work with him. And they didn't find anybody in history is made. I've been with them now 48 years out of the wow. 50, you know, 50 plus years. So wow. yeah, he sung backstage though for two years. For, yeah. Yes. Because he couldn't entertain. Couldn't entertain. And I went through the same thing. Yeah. If didn't know what to do. You didn't know what to do. You, you got on stage. You weren't getting up on that stage. You weren't getting up on that stage. No. No. If you wasn't right, right, if you wasn't ready, right. right. no. you're not yeah. getting up on that stage. And we'll that again. Hey, buddy. Yep. That's, I was groomed. That's the most important thing. Sitting behind yeah. the, the band or something. Yes, yeah. 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 that's, that's what, what they did. Literally, I didn't get behind the band. I was in the wing. Nobody even knew I was standing in the wing except for people that stage, you know, stage crew. They knew I was standing there singing. But, you know, but Nick, and every night after we performed, either the day I would rehearse all day with Nick, then at night we would rehearse again, and I did that for almost two years. Oh, you was in the G League? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah. two years later. Mm -hmm. Getting your reps up. Yeah. 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 At, in Oakland, California, I got there thinking I'm going to be in the wings again, and the nigga said, okay. Nice. Because nice. I'm nice. telling him all the time I'm ready, uh -huh. but I'm not sure if I'm ready, but I'm telling him, I'm ready, I'm ready. He said, no, well, you're not quite ready yet, you know. And this one night they said, okay, you, you think you're ready? I said, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, tonight you're going to get dressed. We're going to go on Ruthie's stage. Ruthie's in. You remember that? Yeah, yeah Ruthie's in. Yeah, had a heart attack. Yeah, I had never California. shaked that much in my life. <laughs> it's like a now that it's here, you could do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, muscle memory from doing it's it all the time, in. it kicked yeah. in, and it just got better and better because what people don't understand is negative time. When you're just standing there doing nothing, how do you hold yourself? Mm -hmm. You can either look awkward mm -hmm. 
or you can look G, right? Yeah. So people don't understand that. Yeah. In the performance thing, Nick would always say, you have to hold your hands a certain way. Mm -hmm. You have to look like, you can't look like you're thinking. You know, if you mess up, don't even worry about it. Just catch it at the next spot. He says they most likely won't know, you know, but that's what Nick taught me. And, and when them too, because I, when they walked out, them niggas was like, from the time they said, ladies and gentlemen, the whispers, from that point, walking out, it was all choreographed. All planned. To the everything. end of the show. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Every bow. Every, I mean, every little minute thing that you probably wouldn't see was choreographed. And I had to learn all that. It took me two years. Wow. You know. Amazing. I love that. Amazing. I love that. Okay, here we go. We're going to do this in pieces. Mm -hmm. This is called the R&B Voltron. Okay. <laughs> We're going to build your R&B singer. Okay. okay. This is the Whispers R&B Voltron. Okay. We're looking for who you want the vocal from, who you want the styling from, uh, who you want the performance style from, and who you want the passion from. So. Mm. Wow. Where are you getting the vocal from? I'm starting with you. I'm, I'm looking Ooh. right at you. Mr. Feeling. Mr. I got to sing it my way. But you're talking about feeling. See, the problem is this, is this is a fascinating question, simply because in my mind, who I want to do for feeling ain't necessarily the person. Because there's a difference between singing with feeling and performing on the stage. Okay, for so sure. tell him who you want. Yeah. Well, you know who I want for feeling. There's only one. There's Donnie Hathaway for feeling. Mm. But Donnie, excuse my French, I loved him to death, but Donnie Highway was a short guy, wore a big cap, and his whole thing was, mm -hmm. that's that's comes from the voice. It's, you might be shocked who I say in terms of performing. Well, no, this is just the vocal. Yeah, this, this, no, this is the vocal. vocal. Oh, just vocal. vocal. Vocal is Donnie Hathaway for me. Donnie Hathaway. Okay. I love that. You can't, yeah. you can't go wrong with that. No. But I, Donnie, are you were performing? No, I'm going, some, I'm going oh, to somebody else. Oh, you go, oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah, I'm, going to, I'm going to spread <laughs> okay. this around. Okay. Who you getting the style from in terms of how they look on stage? Mm. That oh. drip. That drip. Marvin Gaye. Oh, mm. yeah. You got mine. Yeah. Same Same like Marvin Donnie. Gaye. Dressed like Marvin. Oh, that's it. Uh, this is getting oh, different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Marvin yeah. Gaye. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm with, yeah. Okay. That's, well, I don't know what you're going to ask me, but he said that. Right <laughs> Who are you getting the performance style from? How to get down on stage? Wow. That's easy for me. Man. I can't believe you ain't even think mm. performing. And it's probably be, well, it's not before they know who he is, but who? James Brown. Ooh, ooh. Well, it, yeah, James, James Brown performing? Perform. Yeah, performing, yeah. He's, performing? <laughs> he, James Brown? Throw that hood over there, he throw it off. <laughs> and dancing. And, and, and it's amazing and when you energy. say, yeah, yeah, performing. He said performing, right? Right, yeah. yeah. James Brown and Bobby Brown. Ooh. And throw in Chris Brown. Throw in Chris, Chris Brown. Brown. Chris Brown. 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 That's all Browns. Brown. Brown. That's all before. But they're all Browns, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my now, God. That's before me. But you those can't. two Browns. You can't miss with those. James yeah. Brown and Bobby Brown. Go, yeah, performing? Yeah. My yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah, he was a bad boy. Bobby was yeah. tough, young. What Bobby was tough. I watch him As give. A young I watch guy. him give new edition. The whole group. Oh, the yeah. whole group. The whole exactly. group. He gave him everything oh, they needed. Didn't he? Yes, that's didn't right. he? Yeah. Gave him everything they needed. Yeah. I'm glad you said this, Scotty. And you know he's so young. I'm thinking, and but you got to give it to oh, him. You got to give it. Yeah. Performing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That category. Yeah. That's a different whole. Mm -hmm. You know. All right. One more piece. One, one more piece. piece. And all and all of you guys can chime in on this. Who you get the passion from? The heart of your artists. Who who give it all they got? Well, yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. We work with him all the time, and I watch him perform, and he gives one hundred and fifty thousand percent every time he sings a song, and that to me is um, um, OJ's. Uh, 
Eddie, Eddie Levert. Eddie Levert. He gives one hundred and fifty percent. He every don't sweat time. the whole three piece suit. Exactly. Yeah. Andy, Levert. that is very, very true. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good pick, David. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a, a great nice, pick. Yeah. Nice pick. I watch him all the time. Very apropos. You're right. Yeah, he's dead on too. All the time. Anybody want to add to that? Anybody want to throw some more passion? We had we had Eddie Levert for passion. For passion, I think Eddie Levert is it. Yeah, yeah, I go with Eddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he gives you, he gives you all. That, Every that, I went on tour with 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 them. I was on tour. I was opening for um, with the Jays for the OJ's. Man, I was no for, kidding. I was opening for Babyface, OJ's, and Patti LaBelle. Wow, wow. is that right? Oh, as wow. a favor to Al Heyman. He was like, I know you're Man, young. Yeah, I know you're young. I know you're young. Boy, I know you this had ain't to be in heaven, weren't you? But yeah. I need somebody to fill fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I said, uh, brother Al Heyman, whatever you need, mm-hmm. I'm in. This is this will be school. This will be paid That's education. Exactly right. right. You should have been paying him. Paid, right. with paid education. And I watched. Right. I watched Eddie every night, and Eddie would come and watch my show. No yeah, kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah. He would come on, and then Babyface would, you know, say, "Hey man, you should come out and sing some of the, you know, the the song I wrote, all the songs that I wrote segment. You should come sing some of those with me." And no I come kidding. out on stage with Babyface wow. and sing with him. Wow. Like, oh, no, it was, Unbelievable. It was that dope. Be it was crazy. Man. Right. The information I got from that tour. Oh, yeah. yeah I can imagine. And then Patty come out there Priceless. and just. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Another one. And just take Another us home to heaven. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? We toured. I got to give it to him, to Luther. We toured with him for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Vocally, Goodness. man, Goodness. Luther Different. was strong. Ridiculous. Didn't miss. He Big Luther, just, small Luther, didn't make anyone. His was incredible, man. Didn't miss. You know, and I'd yeah. ask him, I'd say, because don't you get hoarse? You know, he told me that, you know, he didn't, he said he, he you know, he would take lemons, and but not much. He said, Lemonade. what really does it for me is not singing, just rest. Rest. I said, so mm-hmm. that's, because that's, he'd go out on stage and his, his voice was so silky. You know what I'm talking about. He was Jay, silky. Yes. And he hit them notes every night. Every night. But you said it, rest. He t- that's what he said. We don't rest. Yeah. We don't rest. Yeah. I, and I and, and I'm I'm victim of that. Because I'm like the class clown. I got to crack the jokes. <laughs> you know, I got to have a beverage or two. You know, I'm burning the midnight oils. Then I'm gonna go work out for yeah. two hours. Oh, like, oh no. And that's Counter yeah, completely counterproductive. Yeah, it is yeah. to keeping that instrument sharp. Yeah, that's what Luther told me. Yeah. And wow. I mean, I you know I never use lemons and stuff like that either. But I noticed after two three days, I'm I'm gonna be hoarse. Yeah, you got fun. Yeah, you got to get some rest and not use them vocal cords. And mm-hmm. he told me that's that's what it is. Because I kept wondering. I mean, you know, we'd by the fourth night. You'd hear everybody. You could tell when you they hear the ash. when the vocalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Everybody sound like quartet singers. He didn't, he didn't do that. <laughs> I told you yeah. I was going. Yeah, back. man. Yeah, I don't know what he did, but he didn't have that problem. Yeah. No, right. Okay. Well, we got we got one more segment for y'all, man. We can't let y'all get away yeah. without getting to yeah. probably the most important segment. Um, <laughs> yeah, on the whole important. It is. Especially when we got the legend. Especially when we got the legend. Because y'all, got the, y'all yeah. got the best. Y'all got the best story. Oh, there, there were no camera phones back then. <laughs> right. There were no cameras right. at all. Yeah. Yeah. No y'all camera. got away with so much. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we got a segment of the show. It's called I Ain't Saying No Name. I ain't saying no name. <laughs> I ain't saying no name. 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 No. So the story can be. Funny or fucked up, mm-hmm. or funny and fucked up. Mm-hmm. The only rule is <laughs> you can't say nobody's names outside of the members of the of the of the whispers. Of the whispers. Okay. That's yeah. it. Wow. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Mm. So right now, we about to get the whispers. The whispers. I ain't saying no names. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh hey baby close. Close your eyes, yes. <laughs> and eyes, it's everything. It's earmuffs. No names, but uh, I think probably the craziest things that have happened to me um, back in the day, many years, many moons ago, um, and, you know, doing my thing, met a young lady out on the road, and uh, <laughs> took her back to the hotel. Mm-hmm. And this was a place, sometimes we go to places where we're there for more than one day. Yeah. So... You have one that day, and then you get another one the next day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can't double up. Yeah, you gotta, you double you up. Switch yeah. that out. You gotta switch that out. Yeah. So yeah. I wind up having this one girl, and then you know next night I met another one that I really liked. So I decided I'm gonna take her back to the hotel. <laughs> well, the first one. 
came back to the hotel uninvited. Mm. So uh, she's sitting in the lobby waiting on me to roll in. So I rolled in with the other one on my arm. Mm -hmm. She's standing there. She's like, uh, what's going on? I said, well, you know, uh, I'm with her. You know, she says, oh, no, 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 no. You, you're not with her tonight. You with me. And I said, no, I'm with her. So you're going to have to go home. She says, no, no, no. It ain't like that. You with me. So get on the elevator. She gets on the elevator, too. I remember this. I go up to my floor. I get off the elevator. She gets off the elevator, too. I got one on the left, one on the right. So I take the other one. And I say, okay, you going in the room. I'll be there. I got to handle this. So the, the other girl says, no, I'm, we we all going in this room together. And I'm like, no, you can't come in the room. She said, no, we we all going to be in this room. We all going to party tonight <laughs> together. I'm like, no, baby, you can't be in here. You know, I'm with her. You go home, I'll call you tomorrow. She says, no, it ain't going that way. So I try to go in my room. She was pushing to go in the room with me. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Now, you know, you need to stop all this. I'm trying to be cool. So I try to go in the room again. By this time, people hear us out in the hallway. And Leon Blue, who was our musical, <laughs> he was actually our stage manager at, at this time. His buddy of mine, we still close as these. We just went to his wife's, his new, uh, his uh, wedding. But anyway, he peeks out the door and he sees me out there and he's eyeballing the argument. So after about the third time me trying to get in my room, I'm pissed off. I'm mad now because she's interrupting my flow. Yeah. So I put my hand on her chest and push her back. So she stumbles back and she breaks her heel on her shoe. So I decide, okay, I'm gonna go in my room. I told you I'll see you tomorrow. Take your, you know, home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, uh, no, it ain't going down like that. And I heard click up. And I turned around. <laughs> no, no. Oh. And she pulls out a little 38. I'll remember it the day I died. It was all <laughs> polished with a pearl handle on it. Nice looking gun. <laughs> Lovely gun. <laughs> well, then uh, Leon Blue, I'm thinking you're going to come down and help me. Uh, his dog go click up. <laughs> So now I'm standing in the hallway. <laughs> a lot of clicks. A lot of clicks. I'm like, oh, so now I gotta go diplomat. Hey, baby, you don't, you don't want to shoot one of the whispers. <laughs> you don't want to shoot one of the whispers. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Oh man. So, but yes, I didn't she know. Did. Yeah, she did. But we're standing in the hallway for about 15 minutes arguing. I guess he went back to his room and called and the called. police. That's exactly what happened. The, the elevator opened. I've never been so relieved in my life. Two big ass white policemen came and walked down the hall. And so <laughs> me bitching out, I said, she got a gun. <laughs> 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 the funny part about it, he didn't hesitate or say anything about the gun. He says, ma'am, you got to go. I think he's going to go and you know, take her down. Yeah. He says, you got to go. And she's like, I'm not going anyway. He says, ma'am, you're either going to go or we're going to take you to jail. So he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be with you, doesn't want to be bothered with you. You got to leave. She walked over to me before she left and she said, <laughs> the hair started <laughs> from that point on the other two days that we were there I had a bodyguard every day because I didn't know she was going to come back and shoot me or not and so from that point on I learned keep them far apart <laughs> don't be doing it in the same city stick with one oh, my goodness. watch how you whisper to him watch how you whisper to him man <laughs> <laughs> so that was my crazy story. You did story a whole that. whisper. You got to do half a whisper, man. You can't just do the whole whisper to everybody. Wow. Like, woo, that's yeah. dangerous. Yeah, and they remember it. I was like, man, it scared me the daylights out of me. Because I was and like, they, I they, they didn't say nothing about the gun. They didn't, didn't say, say nothing about the gun. Come on, you just got to leave. You got to go. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, if not that I again, I got to LA, live here. Yeah. You ain't got, you ain't got to, to live, live here. here. <laughs> wow. Who's who's next? Who who got something else? Well, actually, me and Scott need to kind of intertwine because we ended up. We're going to get the twin story. Yeah. <laughs> the twin story. <laughs> we were in Buffalo, New York. This has been years ago with a huge jazz artist. He's now gone. He had a record called, was it Dookie Stick? Big. Oh, you talking about George? Uh, uh, George. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we were, opening, that. Yeah, we were yeah. opening for him. And in those days, the headliner, you know how it is, they get everything. Yeah. So we get to the sound check, and all of their instruments are covering the entire stage. And all that's left is about a spot as big as this table <laughs> for us to perform on. And we said, are, are the instruments going to be moved back? Or can we, you know, because we couldn't even get the five of us yeah. on there. They said, no, that's it. <laughs> that's your space. So Scotty said, no, 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 no. We got to have more space than this. He gets pissed off. <laughs> and he attempts to kick the drum set with his feet. And one of the roadies came to stop him from kicking it. And Scotty turned around and cold cocked that man. <laughs> and it, it was on. He was fighting. They called the police. <laughs> and our trumpet player said, Scotty and Walt, y'all got to get out of here. Yeah, go back leave. to the hotel, hotel as if this never happened. And he said, when you get back to the hotel, get under the bed. <laughs> get under the bed. Because <laughs> they coming for you. He said, they're going to find you. <laughs> you laughing you, you, you laughing but this is the only yeah. we came no I was back. there that's I know, that's just we went to the hotel about, room about. and we both got under the bed <laughs> <laughs> and of course the bed kind of went like yeah, this but yeah. well, we got under <laughs> we got <laughs> under that <laughs> bed under, partner. You know, yeah. the funniest part about it is that when we went to the room to find out where they were <laughs> The guy you're talking about, John, he was our saxophone player, trumpet player, and trumpet player. And I'm like, where's Scotty and Paul? <laughs> and he's cracking up. He points to the bed. <laughs> you look under the bed, they laying out like this. <laughs> Did they actually come looking for you? Nobody came. Nobody, 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 nobody came. Never came. And took us to jail. <laughs> wait, wait, you said they came? Yeah, the police came. And y'all went to jail. We went to jail, both well, of us. Nick, Nick paid off what basically how we ended up getting out of jail. They ended up taking us to jail with a little, little funny. The guy that he, that he called got pressed charges. Yeah, he pressed wow. charges. And the police came and, and said, they, we got to take you. What Nick did is went to their road manager, paid them off, mm -hmm. and they dropped it. Yeah, yeah, dropped, dropped, yeah, we, we spent overnight and they came and got us. But did you have a show that night? Y'all missed the show. The yeah, show was over with. The oh, show was over because they were they cold. And the artist, because when the you fight one, you got to fight we the with, other one. He's coming, I wish so. I could tell you, but he's a big artist. <laughs> yeah, he he died a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Piano player. He, well, that's the only way they could they could hurt us because yeah. they knew our show with our routines and the twins and yeah, the acrobatic stuff we did. If you could not give us enough space, yeah, then you. You know, and there's other artists that done that too. You know, that would give us a little space because they said we don't need. I don't need the heat. Right. And as long as I don't have but the you heat, know what? <clears throat> I know this. This segment is don't no name, and we're not calling no name. But I, I will say this much to who, if you guessing who that was, because he's no longer with us. Right. We end up being the greatest friends in life. And it wasn't was, him that wow. did it. It, it, it wasn't so yeah, much right. as if it was him. Right. It was really his people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it most was of his, the time it's the people. It was right. his people because he would have never, yeah. never he would have never even went that route. Yeah. And he was the greatest guy. I don't, I, I don't want to call his name because the segment yeah. says you can't Well, let's put that. it like this. We later ended, um, ended up doing one of our biggest Christmas songs that he produced. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's dope. That's yeah. great. That's great. Mm -hmm. It worked out. It, it worked, worked out. out. It worked out. But somebody worked had out. to catch those hands. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I got to catch somebody the hands. Somebody had a good touch. Yeah. That's when you was crazy. Stupid. That's when you was crazy. That's when you was crazy. Yeah. That's when you was crazy. Yeah. 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 crazy. He catches some. A lot of people caught hands during that time. But let me say this to you, you two in particular. We said it in the beginning, but we have to say it again because. The fact that you two young guys thought enough of us yeah. to even allow us to do this, yeah. right. amen, we don't take that for granted. Not, not at all. We appreciate it. We want you to know we appreciate it. We didn't even get into 
maybe we can do it another time. This platform gives us the opportunity to say to our people some things that we normally would have never got to do. Yeah. Exactly. We thank y'all for that. Yeah, Definitely. we appreciate it. We don't take Definitely. it for granted, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, the listen. fact that you just appreciate old school music. Oh, come on. I man. love oh, it. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, know I heard that stuff on, uh, you know, on Soul Train talking about R&B is dead and ah. stuff. And I'm like, what the heck are they talking just, about? Just alive and thrive. Just yeah. trying to spark it. Well, spark yeah. A conversation. Look at y'all. That's, That's why yeah. I look at y'all. Y'all still yeah, call it. Y'all. You didn't say hip hop. Yeah, I know. Y'all say R&B. Right. Mm-hmm. We love you R&B for that, man. Money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen, we are, we are, we, first of all, we love you. Yes. Um, we are not scared of a part two. So don't ever go up. Pull up on us. Don't worry yeah. about that. <laughs> I heard that. Anytime. So you got it. You know what I'm saying? The redoing of our catalog. Yeah, we can yeah, get into that next time. In, yeah. This was so good. Yeah. To be yeah. honest with you, we didn't even get to well, next time we'll get into Catalog yeah. talk. Catalog talk. Next time you're going to talk that yeah. catalog. Yeah, we yeah. need this. You know anything about catalog. Yeah. yeah. This, Young this, people this, need to know about this that. This is a role thing. Absolutely. It's a bunch of them. The works. This is the works. You know what I'm saying? The bodies of works. Um. Um, first of all, let me say we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. On on you you are you are held in high regard. Thank you. Over here, you know what I mean. Yes, and so, um, we we can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough for the work, um, and we can't thank you enough for just being here thank and you. Get, giving us these jewels and these and this information. And, you know, because that's that's where we all suffer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. suffer from things we don't know. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so these these places, things, people, all of this that you have, that you've, we need it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank we you need it. If we're going to do Thank better, yeah. it, starts with, it starts with the information. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so... Um, I can't. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to talk catalog talk. Yeah, yeah. and I can't, I can't wait for can't. you to hold us in high regards by giving us one of them smashes. That's that easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. easy. Because now, because now I really get to tap into my funk into my. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I really, I really get to be talented. Right. You know what I'm saying? I get to be talented oh, and make some music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, you so doing much. some. You know, we're balladeers ourselves. Yeah. That's where yeah. we, you know. That's where we come from. So you come from that same yes, school. Yes, so I know you got something. Listen, man. You got something. It's, deep in you between the two of you I, I can extend that bar turnaround to 16 you know what I'm saying <laughs> and you know and then throw a special four in there like oh, yeah. this, I can, we can get creative that's that's easy and it's a must it's, it has to be done yeah. thank last you last thing friends. I want to say to you too just keep doing what you're doing, doing yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. don't change yes sir that's right. just keep doing what you're doing and it'll be fine yes sir yeah. well I'm Tank I'm Jay Valentine and this is the r Money Podcast the authority yeah. <laughs> on all things R and B. And this is the whispers. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank